On day one, I spawned into the ancient forest as a super cool elemental wolf, a wolf spirit tuned into the power of the elements. This is awesome. And I've got 10 hearts too. That's so exciting. I wonder what I can do. I concentrated hard and blasted a powerful ball of energy. This would be an excellent weapon if anybody tried to attack me. And that was exactly what happened. A ghast floated out between the trees before me. What? Why are you here? Aren't gas supposed to stay in the nether? You know nothing, little wolf. The world is changing, and the wheel of time turns on the command of our master, Fungi the Mushroom Lord. Will you swear your allegiance to him? What? Fungi the Mushroom Lord? I'm not gonna swear allegiance to anyone if I don't know what they stand for. If you are not the servant of the Mushroom Lord, then you are his enemy. And it is my duty to destroy his enemies. All glory to the Mushroom Lord. The gas started firing deadly fireballs at me. I was lucky that with my elemental powers, I took less elemental damage from the fire than a normal wolf did. I turned and ran as fast as I could, losing the gas somewhere behind me. I wasn't expecting to get attacked so early. And who was this fungi the Mushroom Lord? Before I could take the time to process any of this, zombies came shambling towards me out of the trees. In a moment of panic, I hit them with an energy blast, destroying them. Using my powers like this is exhausting. I need to find somewhere to sleep and figure all of this mess out. I found some shade beneath the tree and laid down to get some sleep. On day two, I woke up from under the tree and went exploring the ancient forest. It seemed that this experience wouldn't be as awesome as I thought. I need to find out everything I can about this mushroom lord and why nightmarish nether creatures like the ghast are serving him. But first, seeing as how my powers exhaust me, I need some tools and some food. I started on the tools first. In the ancient forest, I was completely surrounded by trees. That's why it was so easy to break one of them down and collect enough wood to make myself a trusty wood pickaxe. Well, not that trusty, but it's a decent means to an end. I used the pickaxe to mine up some of the stone blocks. Between the stone and some spare sticks, I soon had a stone pickaxe and a stone sword. Not quite as defenseless now. That brings me some small comfort at least. I continued exploring the forest with my new tools until I happened upon an evoker standing in a clearing. I approached to ask him a few questions. Greetings, proud evoker. I'm Zozo, the elemental wolf. I have an important question to ask you, but first, an even more important question. Do you have any food? Of course, Zozo. Here, have some of this meat. It's what a growing wolf needs. The evoker gave me some meat, which I ate, seeing my hunger bar replenish. Thank you for this great kindness. And as for the other question, do you know anything about Fungi the Mushroom Lord? I ran into his guest. He seems like some kind of threat to this land. You speak the truth, Zozo. Fungi is a great evil. Some say he rose up from the deep dark. Others say he was grown in some kind of fungal patch of pure evil. All we know for sure is that he controls mutants, monsters, and abominations across the world. And if he isn't stopped, the entire overworld will descend into corruption and filth. That sounds like a job for a certain elemental wolf. Rest assured, Evoker, over the next 100 days, Fungi the Mushroom Lord will be defeated. On day three, I knew that I needed to seek shelter. I couldn't hope to defeat the mushroom monster if I didn't have a place to rest and hone my abilities. As an elemental wolf, I have deep knowledge of the ancestral home of the elemental wolves in the ancient forest. Perhaps I could seek shelter there. But when I arrived at the ancestral home, I was devastated to find that it was already in ruins. It looked like nobody had really lived there in centuries. This must mean I'm the last and only elemental wolf. No matter, I have a duty and I still need to see it through. I'll rebuild the ancestral home myself. I crafted a stone axe and chopped down trees to gather raw materials, then set about painstakingly repairing the broken ancestral home until it was a brand new base of mine. For a brief period, I took a break to admire how the work was coming along when a huge vicious giant came charging out of the woods. He must have been another one of the Mushroom Lord's monsters. While the giant was big and I was small, I didn't back down. I held my ground and fought back against the huge creature until he was no more. And this act of heroism gave me the power I needed to become bigger and stronger. I also rose up to 20 hearts and gained the elemental ability to breathe fire. Yes, this is more like it. I spent the rest of the day finishing up work on the base, proud of myself for how well it was all developing. From day four to day five, I ventured out further into the forest, wanting to find more wood and stone that would help me rebuild the ancestral home to its former glory. 
When I have a fortress that's truly fit for an elemental wolf, it'll give me the confidence I need to vanquish the Mushroom Lord and save the world. But I must have been talking about saving the Mushroom Lord a little too loudly, because suddenly, the same ghast I'd run away from earlier had popped out of the trees. You insolent brat! You have no idea the power you're messing with! The Mushroom Lord is a god, and you are a mere ant! Why are you so devoted to serving that nasty toadstool? You have no idea the power he commands. They say he cannot be destroyed, and all who face him are doomed to fall ill and wither away. Such is his supreme toxic power. The only thing that's toxic to your devotion is this evil wannabe ruler. So how about we cut the talk and fight this one out? That's the first intelligent thing you've said all day. The ghast was a formidable foe with his deadly exploding fireballs, but in the end, it was my elemental energy blast that won the day. The ghast was defeated, and I gathered up the materials I'd come to collect before making my way back to my base. From day 6 to day 8, I ventured into a deep, dark mind network that contained many treasures, secrets, and deadly enemies. I crept through carefully, trying not to attract any unwanted attention. I was here for one thing and one thing only, some valuable iron ore, perfect for upgrading my weapons. We'll see who wins, gross squishy mushrooms or reliable cold iron. I looked up after the mining was done, hearing footsteps. It was a ghost miner walking towards me out of the darkness. But once again, I wasn't going to fold. I unleashed my elemental flame breath on the ghost miner, easily defeating it. Then I proceeded further into the dusty old cave where I found an abandoned furnace. There I forged an iron sword and an iron pickaxe. The Mushroom Lord is gonna love these, I'm sure. From day 9 to day 10, I decided to leave the cave and the ancient forest and explore the autumnal valley. It's been an intense few days. I think I need to go to a nice, calm place and clear my head so I can make a plan of action. But because the universe has a cruel sense of humor, during this mission of relaxation, I found Fungi the Mushroom Lord himself waiting for me! A huge, terrifying fungus man! Ah, so you're the little cub they call Zozo. You're far less impressive than I was led to believe. Such a shame. I thought having an interesting challenger might liven up this whole process. This process being... The great change. I will alter and rebuild this sad little world in my own image. So far, none have offered up a meaningful challenge, and I don't expect that you will change this. Allow me to prove you wrong, fungi. I unleashed my strongest attacks on him. Energy blast, fire breath, and even the strikes of my new iron sword. But it had no effect. That's when he struck me with an energy blast of his own that almost destroyed me. All I could do was run away in terror. I ran as fast as my elemental wolf legs could carry me. Even when I could no longer see Fungi the Mushroom Lord, I still felt terrified of him. I don't think I'd ever been so close to total destruction. In my darkest moment yet, an air elemental appeared. Be calm, child. Fear will not save you here. How could I be calm? I couldn't even slightly hurt him, and hurting me was nothing to him. I'm outclassed here. But Zozo, you're the only one who can defeat him. Do you not know of the prophecy about the elemental wolf? Prophecy? Look, I don't want to talk here. He could pop up at any time. Come back to my base with me, the ancestral home of the elemental wolves. We'll talk more there. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to my base to find the air elemental already there waiting for me. How did you do that? I'm an air elemental, young Zozo. I can move as swift and silently as the wind. Then I guess I better build you a new room. Right now, there's only one for me. That would be much appreciated, Zozo. I spent the rest of the afternoon building the air elemental a new room in the ancestral home. When it was done, he fitted in there nicely. You have done well, Zozo. Allow me to give you your first mission. You must source armor. But wolves can't wear armor, air elemental. What use would armor give me? You're not going to wear it, Zozo. You're going to keep it in the chest at the ancestral home. Having it in there will harden the strength of your spirit. It's an ancient tradition, you see. Very well, master. I shall do this. Good. Take this potion of strength, should you encounter trouble on your way. I returned to the cave, where I mined for more iron ore. However, my little adventure was interrupted by a huge, terrifying dead worm burrowing through the ground towards me. I tried to shoot it with an energy blast, but it resisted the attack. 
I needed to quickly drink the potion of strength the air elemental had given me. That gave me the boost I needed to pull out my sword and finally defeat the beast. Then I took the iron ore down to the underground furnace and smelted it into a full set of iron armor and finished my tool set. After that, I went back to my base and the air elemental created a chest in my room. I put all my new iron armor inside and just hoped that the air elemental was right. I'll take anything that can help me right now. From day 13 to day 15, I convened with the air elemental in his room. He told me that he wanted to tell me about the prophecy he had mentioned earlier. You said something about an elemental wolf prophecy? Yes, yes, that I did. It's an ancient one that I studied back when I was a mere monk before ascending to the level of air elemental. The prophecy says that a darkness would rise up from the ground and spread evil and tyranny across the overworld. Many would fall, but in the end, a great hero, the final elemental wolf, would rise up, discover his true power, and turn back to the dark. I believe that prophesied one is you, Zozo. But, but, that's impossible! The last time I fought Fungi the Mushroom Lord, I didn't leave a scratch on him, and he almost destroyed me! I can't be the one from the prophecy! You can be, and I truly believe you are, Zozo. But you must train hard and fight with all you have. Only then can you stand a chance against the terror that faces you. Are you up for the challenge? I... I'll have to think about it. From day 16 to day 19, I woke up to find that the base was eerily quiet. I searched around, but I couldn't find the air elemental anywhere. This isn't good. I sense that something terrible has happened. I need to follow my elemental intuition and find him before it gets any worse. I followed my senses out to the cold swamplands. There, I couldn't help but feel paranoid. It was like I was being watched every step I took. And those senses paid off because suddenly an ender creeper teleported in front of me. The Mushroom Lord was right. You fell right into our trap, little silly woofy. And you think you're gonna be the one who defeats him? Embarrassing! What did you do with the air elemental? If you hurt him all... You what? There's nothing you can do. Nothing except be destroyed. The Ender Creeper ran at me, preparing to explode. He probably would have blown up half the Swamplands if I hadn't hit him with a quick energy blast, destroying him before he had a chance to destroy me. Man, the people that the Mushroom Lord are sending after me really are dangerous. Suddenly, the Air Elemental popped out of nowhere. He must have been bound by some kind of dark magic until I defeated that awful Ender Creeper. Zozo, you saved me! You're a true hero! Thank you so much for this! Master Air Elemental, I'm so happy you're alive! This is amazing news! I'm going to return to the base to regain my strength. Stay safe out here, Zozo. Fun Guy the Mushroom Lord has agents everywhere. The Air Elemental left, and I continued exploring the eerie cold swamplands. During my search, I found a few zombies and was able to defeat them with my deadly iron sword. That gave me enough XP to level up again, becoming bigger, stronger, going as high as 30 hearts, and gaining a new ability, claw attacks. That feels appropriate for a wolf. I decided to leave the swamp, but on the way out, I ran into a wise looking gold pig. You seem like you're in a hurry, son. Of course I am. I'm going to defeat Fungi the Mushroom Lord. No, you're not. What? Yes, I am. No, you're not. Fungi the Mushroom Lord is a monster of pure evil. He's literally invincible. Unless you have the halo, which is almost impossible to get, there's no way you can beat him. Oh. From day 20 to day 22, I returned to my base, only to see a couple more zombies milling around the grounds. The corruption of Fungi the Mushroom Lord seems to spread everywhere. I used my claw attacks to destroy the two zombies, then slinked off to my room, feeling defeated. Maybe there really was no way for me to defeat the Mushroom Lord. Maybe the prophecy was all nonsense. As if sensing my self-doubt, the air elemental wafted towards me. Zozo, I've been working on something for you. I wanted to wait until it was done, but I think you need to see it now. It's a statue, a kind of monument, meant to inspire you and remind you of your inner strength. Perhaps you can help me finish it. I went out behind my base and saw the beginnings of a statue. Already, it was amazing, even awe-inspiring. I felt so grateful to the Air Elemental for everything he'd done. Can you guess what it is yet? If you can, tell me down in the comments. And while you're down there, remember to subscribe to Zozo and hit the bell to make sure you never miss one of our adventures. 
From day 23 to day 26, a swarm of gas floated towards my base, launching explosive fireballs, trying to damage the statue we'd been working on. Oh no, more of the Mushroom Lord's minions. Don't worry, I'll handle them. Be careful, Zozo. I leaped into action. I had already taken on one gas, so I was feeling pretty confident about this fight. But they outnumbered me. I had to be careful not to take any hits. Since they'd come from the nether, the gas managed to resist my fire breath. But luckily, my energy blast seemed to do the trick. One of them even dropped an item I'd never seen before. A fire aspect enchantment for my sword. Wow, this is so cool. I'd better try it out. I ventured off to the autumnal valley to practice my new fire aspect sword on a horde of meandering zombies. Each hit of my new weapon made them burst into flames. Once the zombies were dispatched, a mysterious stranger approached me. Wow, that's a mighty impressive blade you've got there. Thanks, who are you? Well, I'm a weaponsmith, see? I specialize in quality crafted swords, bows, you name it. I've been trying to get to safety since the Mushroom Lord's forces started swarming all over the place. I don't suppose you know anywhere I could stay? Sure, come back to my base in the ancient forest. We returned to my base, and the weaponsmith saw some of the damage the gas had left, so they suggested some ways we could improve the defenses, making my ancestral home better protected against attacks. I built a perimeter wall to keep the Mushroom Lord's minions at bay, and in return for giving me the idea, I surprised the weaponsmith with a new room that he could stay in. This looks fantastic, Zozo. Thank you. From day 27 to day 31, I decided to ask the weaponsmith if they knew anything about the Halo, the mystical item that could supposedly be used to defeat Fungi the Mushroom Lord once and for all. Oh, yes, sir. I've heard many legends of such a thing. Supposedly, an ancient and powerful being fell from the sky many centuries ago. It was the first being to wield a Halo, and it used the power to create the overworld and fill it with life. Then, it created balance between all the elements, between light and dark, good and evil. But then the dark and evil it had created to balance out all the good tried to overthrow the mighty creature and steal the halo for their own dastardly means. In the end, the ancient thing cast its halo out into space. Some folks like to think it's what formed the heart of the sun and keeps it burning. Huh, that's quite the story. You think you could forge a halo of our own? Well, that's no small feat, Zozo. It would just be a knockoff if I made it. Besides, a halo requires a powerful being, one able to bring balance to all the elements in order to wield it. But the real thing could be out there somewhere. There's some stories about it being lost at the heart of the swamplands, so maybe start there. My search for the halo took me into the swamplands again, but I wasn't able to get very far. A witch ambushed me, sent by the Mushroom Lord to stop my progress. The witch was wielding dangerous spells, and although I fired a few energy blasts back, I couldn't get close enough to use my claw attacks, so I had to retreat. From day 32 to day 35, I was still determined to track down the ancient halo. Maybe the prophecy of the elemental wolf meant I could wield it and use its power to stop the Mushroom Lord. I ventured back to the cold swamplands, and luckily that pesky witch had gone. But the place wasn't empty. Completely by chance, I stumbled across a weird creature that looked like a mix between a chicken and some kind of lizard. Hey, what the heck are you? Why, I'm a cockatrice, but my friends all call me Clarence. Are you with the Mushroom Lord? I heard he controls all sorts of monsters and mutants. That's rude. I'm actually trying to get away from the Mushroom Lord. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to offend you. Say, why don't you come back to the ancient forest? My base is there. Sounds like a plan, Zozo. I'll see you there. Clarence ran out of sight, adding another person to my forces in the war against evil. But then, all of a sudden, the Mushroom Lord emerged. Clarence, Clarence, there's no use in hiding. You will be mine. Oh no, I need to make myself scarce. Before the Mushroom Lord could see me, I quickly dug a small pit into the ground and hid in it until he passed through. Phew, that was a close one. From day 36 to day 39, I made my way back to my base, where Clarence was waiting for me. I immediately started working on a comfy new room for him, and when the room was done, Clarence and I sat inside, discussing our common enemy. So, what made you want to leave the Mushroom Lord's armies? He's just so cruel. All he cares about is controlling the overworld and making everyone do his bidding. Some of us just want to live our lives, do our own thing without him telling us what to do all the time. Say, Clarence, I've been searching for a halo so I can use its power to stop the Mushroom Lord once and for all. Do you think you could help me find it? Well, what do you know? I heard about something like that. 
They say that the halo glows bright with the heat of the heavens, so why don't you head someplace hot to find your halo? That's a pretty good idea. I'll head to the desert. Things are pretty hot out there. Listen, Zozo, I wanted to repay you for letting me stay. I noticed you had an unfinished statue outside, so I thought I'd give you a hand with it. What do you think? I went to take a look at the statue's progress. Whoa, I'm really impressed. Thanks, Clarence. You didn't need to do that. I'm happy to help, but I still appreciate the gesture. The statue is looking better than ever. A large recreation of an elemental wolf like me that perfectly told everyone around not to mess with us and that this forest was protected. Even if the statue was unfinished, seeing it closer to completion made me feel inspired. From day 40 to day 43, the weaponsmith informed me that I'd need some much stronger gear if I was going to explore the desert in search of a magic halo. Listen here, Zozo. You don't want to get stuck in the desert without the right equipment. Luckily, I can make you what you need. I just need you to head into a cave near here to grab the right materials. No problem. Just be careful. There could be all sorts of critters down there. I set off to the cave that the weaponsmith had pointed out, and it didn't take long for me to meet some critters, just like they'd warned me. I had to fight my way through the nasty insects, but lucky for me, my fire aspect sword was burning through them pretty easily. It was only as I got deeper into the cave that I discovered a nest of the bugs with a Myrmex queen in the center. I used an energy blast to clear the path. Too much fire, and I'd run the risk of getting burned myself. With the nest cleared out, I found what I needed. Diamonds! Bringing them back to the weaponsmith, they were able to turn the diamonds into a matching diamond pickaxe and diamond sword for me. Now I was ready to head off to the desert. From day 44 to day 49, I was certainly glad to have a diamond sword handy. When I first made my long journey to the desert, I encountered a troll, a huge, ugly beast that tried to smash me to pieces. Luckily, I was able to dodge out of the path of his attacks. He was much bigger and slower, so my wolf speed made it easier to duck and weave between his clumsy, cumbersome swings before I could land the final blow with my sword. With the troll defeated and out of my way, I continued towards the desert. But when I arrived, it was clear just how dangerous this place was. Someone was already in trouble. Help! Somebody, help! It was a cyclops who was being crowded by vicious husks. They were using the fact he had only one eye to take swipes at him from all sides. I jumped right in to help, hacking all the husks down. Wow, thanks so much for your help. No problem. I don't suppose you know where I can find the ancient halo? The halo? I'm pretty sure there's an old temple around here somewhere that might have what you seek. Come on, I'll lead you there. Just keep an eye out for more husks, will ya? From day 50 to day 53, we made our journey to the ancient temple and looked around. The place was pretty much deserted, all just ruins like when I had found what was left of my ancestral home back in the forest. The Cyclops and I went into separate directions to search, leaving each of us alone. Suddenly, I was confronted by the witch I'd found in the swamp. You again? I'll deal with this meddlesome pup once and for all. Then I'll find that halo and destroy it to win favor with the Mushroom Lord. Our battle began, and I had to move out of the path of the witch's spells. I'd faced off against that powerful magic before, and it had almost taken me out. But I had more experience now. I'd learned from my past defeats, and I'd come with new weapons. So I leapt into action and swiped my diamond sword at the witch. It worked! I landed some strong hits, then used the rubble of the temple as cover. Jumping back out at the right time, I was finally able to beat the witch for good. The Cyclops had been hiding, but reappeared to show me around the temple. There was a hidden area underneath the floor. Go down there alone, Zozo. I'm way too scared. I went into the underground area alone, and there we found something I never expected to see. It wasn't the halo, it was a lightning dragon. Ah, you must have come seeking the halo. Sorry to disappoint, but don't worry, you're on the right path. You cannot merely find the halo, it must find you. But how can I make it find me? You must master balance, Zozo. Become the balance of all elements. Then, and only then, will you find what you seek. From day 54 to day 57, I made the long journey back to my base. When I arrived, I was so happy to see how much it had improved. I took a look at all the upgrades that my friends had made while I'd been gone. There were more defensive walls around the perimeter. We even had a watchtower where I could keep a lookout for the Mushroom Lord's forces. It was all coming together really nicely. I spoke with my mentor, the Air Elemental, about the advice the Lightning Dragon had given me. 
Achieving balance between the elements is your destiny, Zozo. But it's no easy task. You need to seek out the root of evil and start tipping the scales. And as you do, you'll learn more with every victory. Here, there is one of the Mushroom Lord's cronies scouring the ancient forest for you. Go and tilt the scales back towards balance. I set off to find the Mushroom Lord's mob, and sure enough, discovered a dreadlitch. This thing was scary. I'd never fought anything like it before. But my focus was on my goal. I had to master the elements and bring back balance, and I used that to guide me through the fight. With my goal in mind, battling the dreadlitch seemed easy by comparison, and it fell at my flame breath and diamond blade. I moved as swift as the air with the ferocity of fire and held my ground with the strength of earth. I was starting to learn what it really meant to be an elemental wolf. When I returned back to my base, the weaponsmith had a new diamond helmet forged for me, so I added it to my armor chest, feeling happy I was making so much progress. From day 58 to day 62, I was woken up by the weaponsmith, who seemed super excited to show me something. Come, take a look, Zozo. We've been working hard on getting this place looking mighty fine. Come see the best part. It was the statue. It had been almost finished, and it looked amazing. It towered over the main area of the fortress, proud and awe-inspiring. I was so happy to see it almost finished. It looks awesome. Thanks so much. Suddenly, an explosive fireball rocked one of our walls. I ran outside to see the air elemental panicking. Zozo, gas are attacking. We need to fend them off. Remember what you've learned about balance. Yes, Master. You and all the others should hide in the buildings. I'll take them all on. With everyone else in safety, it was time for me to take on the gas attackers. I hopped into the fray. This time, I tried to imagine water, how fluidly it moved, but also how strong and dangerous it could be. My elements had all the strength and speed of a flash flood, and it meant I was able to take down all of the gas in no time. But I wasn't fast enough to save one of my friends. A ghast had launched a fireball as it ran away, retreating to the Mushroom Lord, and the fireball had struck my trusty Weaponsmith. From day 63 to day 66, I was still feeling sad at the loss of my friend, the Weaponsmith. I had decided to venture back to the desert to seek more information from the Lightning Dragon. Although I was sad, I wanted to use the halo to stop the evil Mushroom Lord. I remembered my goal, balance. Not just balancing the elements, but also finding the right balance of my emotions too. I allowed myself to be sad for my friend, but also had to make sure I didn't let anger or hatred get the better of me. When I returned to the temple in the desert, the lightning dragon was nowhere to be found. That was strange, I thought. But then again, he had been cooped up underground for who knows how many centuries. Maybe he just needed to get out and do some sightseeing. But in his place was an old book. He must have left it behind. I opened it up to read, and it told the story of the halo in much more detail. And even better, there was a clue about where to look for it. I couldn't allow myself to get impatient, learn how to master balance, and the halo would find me. That's what the dragon told me. Suddenly, I was attacked by the ghast, the one who had escaped. This was my chance to defeat it. But while I could have done so out of revenge for my fallen friend, the weaponsmith, instead, I remembered my lessons about balance and dealt with the last ghast. From day 67 to day 70, I headed into the heart of the ancient forest like the book had suggested. There was a sinister fortress waiting for me. It was the Mushroom Lord's hideout. It was no wonder his forces had been able to find my base so easily and so many times. His base wasn't far from mine. It had been under my nose the whole time. I tried to get closer to the fortress, but it was guarded on all sides by mutant zombies. Halt! By order of the Mushroom Lord! I'm not halting for him. His time is up. I need to end his reign of terror once and for all. I attacked the mutant zombie and easily chopped it down, but in the commotion, more of them started swarming to my location. There was a huge horde, too many for me to take down alone. Just as I was about to be defeated, I heard the voice of the air elemental in my head. Zozo, don't give up hope. Things are tough right now, but you can't take on the Mushroom Lord until you're ready. Get to safety. With that, I ran back to a safe distance where the air elemental was waiting for me. From day 71 to day 74, once we had made our way to safety, the air elemental noticed my discomfort. I know you're frustrated, Zozo, but you can't give in to that frustration if you hope to succeed. I understand we all do, but you just want to do right by others. But don't worry, victory will come in its own time. As we headed back to our base, we came across a note that some of the Mushroom Lord's forces had left on a tree. We thought it was to send a message to all of his various mutants and monsters, but it was entirely possible he wanted to brag to me specifically. 
Good news, my minions. I have in my possession the ancient halo. It was not lost. I have had it all along. But we cannot be complacent. The last thing we want is Zozo getting his hands on it. So be alert. And if you spot that elemental wolf, you know what to do. The air elemental offered me some food to replenish my hunger, and we continued towards the base. From day 75 to day 78, we returned to my base in the ancient forest. Although my spirits were pretty low, seeing how much my home had been improved was enough to make me smile again. The place had gotten much bigger, not quite the size of the Mushroom Lord's fungal fortress, but still with more rooms and better storage and crafting areas. It reminded me of the weaponsmith and how he'd be proud to see how far we'd come. Suddenly, there was an attacker at the perimeter wall. It was one of the mutant zombies. It must have followed our trail back from the Mushroom Lord's base. Immediately, I went in to attack it, but not out of anger. I had to make sure to follow the Air Elemental's teachings and not let myself be too frustrated. I fought with all the ferocity of fire, but also the calmness of still water. I stood my ground like stone and finally moved with the swift speed of the air. I was in tune with all the elements and it allowed me to beat the mutant zombie. To my surprise, I leveled up. My victory had made me even stronger. I now had 50 hearts and a new understanding of my elemental abilities. This gave me a special power, the Dragon Fireball Attack. Even better, the mutant zombie dropped a clue. Fungi the Mushroom Lord was going to be in the Autumnal Valley soon. From day 79 to day 84, I headed off to the Autumnal Valley where I had first encountered the Mushroom Lord. Back then, I had learned that he was planning to unleash the Great Change and turn everything in the overworld into an awful fungus-filled realm. But how was he going to do it? Was that what he needed the halo for? And why come to this place specifically? My thoughts were interrupted by another cockatrice popping out in front of me. Hey, who are you? I'm Carl the Cockatrice, and you must be Zozo the Elemental Wolf. So, are you friendly like Clarence? I know not all cockatrices agree with the Mushroom Lord. Oh, you want to find the Mushroom Lord? Well, he's planning to use the winds here to carry his fungus spores across the overworld. Here, I can take you to him. I trusted the cockatrice like Clarence, but to my surprise, he turned on me. He was still loyal to fungi. We battled, and I used my dragon fireball attack to finish off Carl. From day 85 to day 89, I decided to find anyone else that could help me put a stop to fungi the Mushroom Lord's plans. I thought the most knowledgeable person to ask, after my mentor the Air Elemental, would be the Lightning Dragon. So I headed back to the temple where he had been before. But sadly, he still hadn't returned. That's when the Cyclops popped back up. Oh, hey there, Zozo! Hi, you're the Cyclops from before, right? Yes, sir. Simon's the name. Didn't get a chance to thank you for dealing with that witch and those zombies before. No problem. I don't suppose you know where the dragon went? No idea. Haven't seen him since he left the temple. That's a shame. I really needed his advice. Anything I can help with? It's the least I could do after you helped me out. I don't suppose you know how I can get the halo and defeat Fungi the Mushroom Lord? Fungi? Well, the halo would help you for sure, but... You mean you haven't tried netherite yet? Netherite? Yeah, fungi's weak to netherite. And lucky for you, I know a place you can get yourself some. From day 90 to day 94, I headed off to the place that Simon the Cyclops had pointed out for me. It was a cave where apparently someone had stashed some netherite ingots and forgotten about them. I kept my guard up. After being betrayed by Carl, I couldn't be 100% sure that this wasn't a trap. And at any rate, the last time I was in a cave, I had a whole nest of nasty Mermaxes to clear out. But much to my pleasant surprise, I found the chest without any trouble. And sure enough, it was filled with netherite ingots. But I couldn't just hurl them at fungi and call it a day. No, I needed to craft them into something that could help me win the day. I thought back to my old friend the Weaponsmith, and it gave me the perfect idea. I'd make a netherite sword. Luckily, there was something that looked like a smithy right next to me. By combining the ingots with my trusty diamond sword, I was able to turn it into a brand new netherite sword, one that would weaken the Mushroom Lord when we next battled. From day 95 to day 97, I made my way back to my base in the ancient forest. It had been a long journey, and the ancestral home of my fellow elemental wolves was almost restored to its former glory. There was just one final touch. Here, yeah, Zozo, we've been working on it to keep your spirits up, but you should be the one to put the final piece in place. With that, I added the final piece to the Elemental Wolf statue. 
With the statue done, the air elemental approached me. It's time, Zozo. You've learned much about harnessing the elements and restoring balance to the overworld. Before you face the Mushroom Lord once more, you deserve to give yourself a moment to remember just how far you've come and just how much progress you've made. Taking a moment, I realized that I'd grown and gotten stronger as the statue had gotten bigger. It was there as a reminder of how much I'd gone through and how big I felt on the inside now. It had been one heck of a journey and not always an easy one, but I wasn't the same wolf cub that I'd been when I started. Ow! On day 98, I got ready to set off to take on Fungi the Mushroom Lord one more time. First, I spoke to Clarence the Cockatrice. Well, Clarence, this might be goodbye for good. Zozo, wait! I want to come with you. Are you sure? I thought you were scared of the Mushroom Lord. I am, or at least I was, but I should have stood up to him instead of running away. If you're going to take him down, then now's as good of a time as any for me to do what I should have done from the start. Glad to have you with me, Clarence. As we went to leave, my air elemental mentor had one final bit of wisdom to impart. Zozo, you must remember all you've learned. You can restore balance as an elemental wolf with the halo in your possession. You'll be able to bring all the elements of the overworld into harmony once again. But there is one final thing you must do. If you've been enjoying this video, be sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. On day 99, Clarence and I marched up to the huge fungal fortress of the Mushroom Lord. Our plan was to get inside, weaken fungi, and get the halo back from him. We were met by a horde of zombies ahead of us, but I remembered all I had learned so far and relied on my elemental powers to fight back. My dragon fireball attack took out a bunch of them as I used fire and air at the same time. I swung my netherite sword at the zombies, taking them out in one hit. The air was guiding my sword, and the netherite hiding within the earth was strengthening my blows. The zombies had once been a challenge with their numbers, but now I was better attuned with the balance of the elements, staying calm and cutting through them, one by one. As more and more zombies flooded out, Clarence hung back to distract them, and I ran right into the base, ready to take down the Mushroom Lord himself. On day 100, I searched the Fungus Fortress for the Mushroom Lord, but instead, I found what I'd been looking for, the Halo! But it was guarded by a mighty pigless. I used all of the elements to defeat him. And sure enough, just like the lightning dragon had promised, I obtained the halo. I leveled up, getting 80 hearts and even one more extra ability, a lightning blast. I hurled crackling bolts of lightning at the pigless. Before long, they had been defeated, which only left their master. Zozo, you won't stop the great change. Even with that blasted halo, you'll never stop my plans. Soon the overworld will be mine, a filthy fungus-ridden paradise for me to rule over. No, Fungi, you'll never win. I have mastered all the elements, but most importantly, I know why you'll never win. Because there must be balance. The overworld can't just be one thing. Foolish wolf, you have been a thorn in my side for too long. Right before my eyes, Fungi the Mushroom Lord grew into a huge version of himself. Although I was surprised, I didn't let my fear rule me. After all, two could play that game. I channeled the balance of all the elements and called on the power of the Halo to transform into my ultimate form. Ah, woo! The battle was on! I swiped at Fungi with my netherite sword, and it worked! Simon was right, netherite made him weaker! I fought with all the attacks at my disposal, energy blast, then followed up with a claw attack, and some extra dragon fireball and lightning strikes for good measure! The netherite made my attacks do some real lasting damage, the Mushroom Lord was almost beaten! I summoned up all the elements, earth, wind, fire, the water, lightning and energy of the overworld and channel them into one last swing of my sword. Boom! It worked! Fungi the Mushroom Lord was defeated. He exploded into tiny little spores. But this wasn't a chance for me to be cruel, so I called up the wind to carry his spores across the overworld, just enough so that fungus and mushrooms would grow. After all, everything had to be balanced. That was my job as the elemental wolf. On day one, I spawned into the beautiful flower forest as an elemental monkey. Ooh, ah, this is awesome. I'm out here living my best monkey life. 
But some people didn't want me to live my best monkey life. Or rather, some skeletons. I saw one of them coming towards me through the flowers. Trespasser, stop in the name of the law. You shouldn't be here. But I just spawned here. It isn't my fault. How about you just point the way out and I'll leave? It doesn't work like that. There are spies everywhere. And if I have a reason to believe you're one of them, I'm taking you in for interrogation. I really didn't want to be interrogated, so in sheer panic, I just turned and ran as fast as I could until I couldn't even see the scary skeleton behind me. I don't know why they're picking on me. I'm just a baby elemental monkey with 10 hearts. It's not like I could do any real damage to them. But my thoughts were interrupted when suddenly another skeleton with a bow popped out in front of me. Stop right there, criminal. You make any sudden movements and you'll taste the steel of my arrowheads. Okay, okay, what do you want me to do? I'll follow your commands if you don't hurt me. Come with me then, and no funny stuff. My arrow finger is extremely itchy. And so, I followed the skeleton through the flower forest, worrying about my future. On day two, the skeleton with the bow led me towards a dark, dreary base in the middle of the flower forest. It didn't look like anything good went on in there. Maybe we can just talk this out, Mr. Skeleton? You've already tried to run, criminal. That's why we're keeping you on a short leash. We'll talk, sure, but only when we have you behind bars. Now move it. I was sent into the deep, dark depths of the base and locked away in a large and sinister holding cell. But I wasn't the only one in there. There was also a wandering trader. Ah, oh, a fellow businessman, unfairly imprisoned for merely trying to make a living in this hard, cold world. It isn't easy being a wandering trader in this world, is it, my boy? Oh, I think you're a little confused. I'm not a wandering trader. I'm an elemental monkey who just got trapped after I spawned. My name's Zozo. Oh, Zozo. I see. Well, either way, we're in this together, old chap. Perhaps we could start a business. A million dollar idea. We'll be rich, I tell you. Rich! Uh, I don't know if we'll ever make any money if we're still trapped in here. We need to figure out a way to escape. I wonder if I have any elemental monkey powers. I concentrated hard, and suddenly, I fired an ice blast. Okay, this has potential. I blasted ice against the wall until a section of it was frozen, and then smashed through it, freeing myself and the wandering trader. Brilliant work, my friend. I'd go with you, but I need to go speak with my shareholders. May we meet again, Zozo? Good luck with all your, uh, business stuff, trader. I ran off, feeling pretty sick of the flower forest. Hopefully, there are some chiller folks elsewhere. On day three, I went to the frozen peaks, knowing I'd probably be safe from the skeletons there. I'm freezing out here, so imagine how cold a skeleton would be. They don't even have any skin. But I wasn't just cold, I was also hungry. Because it was so cold out there, I wouldn't be able to find any yummy bananas. Instead, I was able to find some yummy winter-kissed carrots. Mmm, snow and carrots, such a classic combination. Who doesn't enjoy eating that? Having had my fill of the carrots, I carried on exploring the frozen peaks, hoping that I could find something that would help warm me up. But instead of finding a nice warm coat or a crackling fire, I instead found a huge creature, the towering High Reaver. Oh no, are you going to attack me too? Why would I attack you, monkey? Are you going to attack me? Uh, no? Then we have nothing to worry about. I am the mighty High Reaver, and these are my frozen peaks. Oh, that's great. Do you know where I can find somewhere warm? I'm kind of freezing out here. Yes, I believe I could take you somewhere nice and warm, but you'll need to do me some favors in exchange. Follow me, Zozo. It was only as I followed him away that I started to wonder if I ever told him my name. From day four to day five, the High Reaver took me to his base up in the frozen peaks, which was warmed by a huge roaring fireplace. My apologies for the mess. If I knew I'd be entertaining guests, I would have cleaned up a little. Please, no need to apologize. This place is amazing. How did you build something like this? It's huge. It wasn't always me. Once I had workers, so many of them, and they loved working for me. I kept them all warm and happy and safe in here until one day. One day? What happened? Well, some terrible, terrible people banded together and attacked my base. All my workers were either destroyed or chased away, and I was left all alone. Oh no, that's horrible. And that's not even the worst part. The ones who did this are still out there, walking free after they destroyed my life. 
I can't let something like that stand. I'll help you get revenge on all the people who did this to you, High Reaver. That's very kind of you, Zozo. In exchange, I will bestow upon you power and tools. Suddenly, the High Reaver transferred some of his power to me. It was amazing. I got bigger, stronger. I now had 20 hearts in total and a new power, the Claw Attack. After that, the High Reaver gave me a stone sword and a stone pickaxe. Thank you, High Reaver. I'm gonna go build my base somewhere a little warmer, but then I'll begin my quest for you. I went to the glowing ancient forest where I felt more confident in my elemental powers and started mining stone and collecting wood from trees. It didn't take me long to start building a basic base where I could at least sleep at night. After it was done, I stood back and took it all in, finally appreciating that I could have a place of my own. But my appreciation was interrupted by one of the skeletons from earlier suddenly emerging, his bow at the ready. There you are. I knew you couldn't be trusted. I'm not giving you a second chance this time. But before he could shoot me, I blasted him with an ice blast and then ran in, finishing him off with my claws. Nobody is pushing this elemental monkey around anymore. From day six to day eight, I was hanging around at my base for a while, psyching myself up for my next meeting with the High Reaver. I was excited to go on the mission, but I'd only ever fought a skeleton before, so I didn't know if I was ready. Am I gonna be strong enough to take on the people who kidnapped or destroyed all of the High Reaver's beloved workers? While I was thinking it over, I saw a familiar face, the wandering trader walking through the glowing ancient forest. I immediately ran over to see how he was doing. Zozo, my boy, such a delight to see you in such troubling times. I hope all of your own ventures and enterprises are going well business marches on. I told you before, Trader, I'm not a business guy, but what do you mean troubling times? Oh, you see, I travel all the way across the overworld, trading this and that, doing business and such, but lightly, well, something is wrong. Missing people, destroyed villages, it's like there's a plague across the land. There's no way this is a coincidence. It must be the same people the High Reaver told me about. I need to look into this further. I left it once, and later that day, I arrived at the High Reaver's base and told him I was ready to take on my first mission. It's good to see that you're eager, Zozo. You'll be doing me and the world a great service. First, you must go further into the Frozen Peaks and annihilate the Onion Queen. I still remember all the terrible things she did. Destroy her, and we will go from there. Yes, High Reaver, I'll do it at once. From day 9 to day 10, I made my way to the frozen peaks, climbing higher and higher as I went to take on the Onion Queen, my first big enemy. I wasn't quite sure what horrible things she'd done. The High Reaver hadn't gone into much detail about it, but maybe that was because her crimes were too terrible to even talk about. Soon after, we met face to face. Halt! Who dares approach her regal onionus? The Onion Queen. We meet at last. Let me guess, a lackey for the High Reaver. Of course, how predictable. Yeah, I'm here to take you down. You'd be wise to reconsider your next actions. There are more layers than you could possibly understand. Otherwise, this will all end in tears. Let's see, shall we? I leapt into the battle, using my elemental monkey ice blast and claw attacks, along with my stone sword. But I couldn't cut through all the Onion Queen's protective layers. I wasn't tough enough yet. All I could do was flee. Suddenly, someone else came speeding in. He was some kind of sorcerer who could wield powerful rock attacks. I watched in awe as he was able to defeat the Onion Queen. I'm glad I found you, elemental monkey. Hey, I'm Zozo. Who are you? I am the last of the noble geomancers, masters of the elements of Earth. Time is short. We must get you to safety and train you to harness all the elements. Hold on. I'm not so sure about this. I think I should go and speak to the High Reaver first. Your path is your own, Zozo. Seek me out if you find yourself lost. From day 11 to day 12, I made my way back to the High Reaver's base. Things were just getting stranger and stranger. I wasn't sure who to side with. The High Reaver seemed like he was just a guy in need of help. But what had that old Geomancer wanted to train me for? You've done well, Zozo. With the Onion Queen no longer stinking up the place, my plans, I mean, our plans can move forward. I need you to complete another task for me. The High Reaver sent me off to a deep cave nearby to mine for some useful resources that I could craft iron armor with. 
After all, I might need the added protection on my quest. There wasn't much in the way of enemies down there, but I came across some iron ore and was able to use a furnace to make iron ingots. With these ingots, I made a few iron armor pieces, as well as an iron sword and an iron pickaxe. But then, just as I was leaving the cave and venturing off, I was ambushed by some icy creepers. I tried using my ice blast on them, but quickly realized they could withstand the freezing cold. So instead, I had to resort to using my sword to shatter each of them before heading off to my next objective from the High Reaver. From day 13 to day 15, I traveled to the ancient glowing forest in search of another of the High Reaver's enemies. He'd told me to seek out an Alpha's hyena, but wouldn't really explain why he needed me to take care of it. I assumed, like I had done with the Onion Queen, that this hyena had wronged the High Reaver in some way, perhaps being responsible for him losing all of his workers. But the High Reaver seemed oddly evasive about the specific details. When I spotted the Alpha Hyena, I'd been expecting to come across a wild, ferocious beast. But instead, it was just an ordinary animal taking care of its pack. This didn't make any sense. Why would the High Reaver want me to destroy innocent animals? The Alpha Hyena wasn't hurting anyone. In fact, it was just gathering food and providing for its hyena pups, taking care of its family. I couldn't go through with it. I had to get a straight answer. So instead of attacking the Alpha Hyena, minding its own business, I decided I'd return to the High Reaver to get my answers. From day 16 to day 19, I marched back to the High Reaver's base, full of purpose and determined to get an honest answer out of him. That was fast. Did you take care of the Alpha Hyena? No, I came back for the truth. What really happened to your workers? And why are you sending me out to defeat all of these mobs? What's really going on here? Zozo, I have already told you all you need to know. I suggest you go and cool off somewhere, little elemental monkey. Unsatisfied with that response, I headed back to my base deep within the ancient glowing forest. When I got there, my pal the wandering trader was there waiting for me. Oh, thank goodness, Zozo, you're here. I need your help. Why? What's going on? It's the High Reaver. He was the one behind the plague across the land. Someone must have angered him. He's attacking a nearby village as we speak. It's just terrible for business. The High Reaver had really been evil this whole time. He tricked me into doing his dirty work. Full of rage, I rushed to try and stop him. And sure enough, came across him ransacking some of the ancient glowing forest. We could have worked together, Zozo. I would have trained you. A powerful elemental monkey with control over all the natural elements could have been perfect for reshaping the land in my image. But if you won't follow me, then I'll just have to tear everything down and rebuild from scratch. I leapt in to try and fight the High Reaver, but he was much stronger than I could have anticipated. In my anger, I lost my concentration. He hit me with a powerful energy blast that sent me flying, and I hit my head so hard that I fell unconscious. From day 20 to day 22, I finally came back around. By the time I woke up, the High Reaver was gone, and the area within the ancient glowing forest had been destroyed. I swore I'd stop the High Reaver somehow. Nobody was ever going to trick this elemental monkey again. Excuse me, I saw you trying to fight off that brute, the High Reaver. You made a valiant effort. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the Mandragora Prince, and I believe I was who the High Reaver was after. That's why he attacked this place. Oh, how come? Well, you see, he's on a rampage, trying to remove anyone that might be a threat to his power. The Onion Queen is already gone, although she really was the worst. But now, I fear I may be next. Okay, Prince, you better follow me. I'll give you a place to stay for now, hopefully where the Reaver won't find you. We made our way back to my base, and I went out to chop down some trees, gathering wood to make wooden panels so I could build the Mandragora Prince his own room. It helped to take my mind off of things for a little while. From day 23 to day 26, I decided to retrace my steps back to the flower forest to see if I could uncover any more information about the High Reaver or what I could do as an elemental monkey in order to stop him. But it was while I was there, I once again encountered a familiar face. Get away, I said get away. You can't attack me. Think of all my business ventures. My portfolio would be ruined if I'm destroyed by, ew, mushrooms. It was the wandering trader. He was under attack with some nearby fungus throwers hurling poisonous spores at him. The wandering trader ran for it and I rushed in and tore one of the fungus throwers up with my claw attack, freezing the other with an ice blast. When the coast was clear, the trader re-emerged. 
Zozo, many thanks again. If you keep saving me like this, I might have to put you on retainer. Well, that's your business, I guess. From day 27 to day 31, while searching for answers around the flower forest, I came across a flock of lost sheep. They looked to me like they'd previously been looked after and cared for, but were now wandering the wild. Of course, they must have lived at one of the villages that the High Reaver destroyed. So I decided I would adopt them and bring them back to my base. I headed back home with the sheep in tow and got to work building a pen for them. I crafted some wooden fencing and arranged it so there'd be plenty of space for the sheep to roam about. They'd be much safer than roaming about unprotected in the wild. Then, the Mandragora Prince approached. Zozo, while well, you've been gone, I've been working on a game room for us. Just a little token of my appreciation for you letting me stay here. Wow, your princeliness. This looks great. You don't need to thank me, though. I'm happy to help. Anything that'll make it easier to take down the High Reaver. Speaking of the High Reaver, he was making upgrades and allies of his own up at his base in the Frozen Peaks. Ah, Vex, my diabolical old friend. You've returned to serve me once again. Yes, High Reaver. What would you ask of me? My plans have to accelerate. I thought I could trick that elemental monkey to my side. But now, we must make sure Zozo never reaches his full potential. From day 32 to day 35, I decided I'd try a new approach, making some more allies of my own. After all, I had already clashed with the High Reaver once in a one-on-one, -on -one, and it hadn't ended well for me. And before, when I'd been trying to evade the skeletons, I hadn't really listened to their side of things, and the High Reaver had used that to make me think they were the bad guys. That's why I returned to their base in the Flower Forest, but I wasn't given a warm welcome. Hold it right there, it's you again! Yo, with the High Reaver, we know you couldn't be trusted. Without warning, the skeletons attacked. I had to take cover using my monkey agility to dodge their arrows. I needed to convince them that I didn't mean any harm. No, wait, I'm not with him. I was tricked, but I came back here to make amends. It must have worked because they stopped firing, but kept their bows trained on me. You better come with us. The shepherd will want to speak with you. They took me to their leader, a wise old shepherd. Say, did you lose some sheeps lately? My name is more of a metaphor. These skeletons are my flock. You see, Zozo, we were once the workers for a beastly tyrant. He commanded us to build a kingdom for him, and we had no choice but to obey. But he planned on working us to death, so we turned our backs on him before it was too late. In retaliation, he put a curse on those of us that passed so that their bones may never rest. He really is the worst, but I intend to stop him. If what you say is true, then I ask you to prove your fealty. Then I will be able to share more with you. From day 36 to day 39, after making a rocky start with the skeletons and the shepherd, I ventured off to mine for some more iron ore. I needed to complete my set of iron armor. It looked like my luck was beginning to turn around because the iron wasn't all I managed to find. Buried deep in the cave were diamonds. Not enough to use just yet, but definitely worth hanging on to. By the time I returned back to the base, there was someone waiting for me that I'd never seen before. He told me that his name was Mason, and he'd been sent as a messenger by the shepherd. He needs your help, Zozo. The time has come to prove your fealty. If you can act fast, then the shepherd and his skeletons will be at your side. Before I left to aid the skeletons, I turned iron ore into iron ingots and forged myself a full set of iron armor. Better to be safe than sorry. From day 40 to day 43, I rushed to the location Mason had given me, deep in the heart of the ancient glowing forest. When I arrived, I finally saw the source of all the commotion. Some skeletons were under attack by Vex, the High Reaver's right-hand henchman. Zozo, we've been trying to fend him off, but we need you. I don't know if I can. This guy looks tough. Please, we're counting on your help. It was me versus Vex, one-on-one. -on -one. I leapt into the fight and crossed swords with Vex, who seemed to be weirdly happy to see me. Ah, there's the troublesome little elemental monkey I've heard so much about. The High Reaver will reward me handsomely when I bring you back to him in pieces. We battled hard. I tried using my elemental powers like the Ice Blast. It had no effect. Vex shrugged it off like it was nothing. Nice try. I don't really feel the cold. I went in for a claw attack, but it barely left a scratch. It was becoming clear I wasn't going to win this fight. And if I was defeated or captured, I had no hope of ever stopping the High Reaver. So I decided to retreat, ashamed at my weakness. 
From day 44 to day 49, I headed back to my base, feeling a little crushed that I hadn't been able to defeat Vex or help the skeletons. It was made even worse by the fact that now the Shepherd probably wouldn't want to help me anymore in my fight against the High Reaver. At least, that's what I thought at first, only to see him waiting for me when I arrived back at my base. I owe you an apology, Zozo. I was wrong to bring you into such an intense battle so early, without all the skills and tools you'd need. But you showed a great deal of restraint out there, and initiative too. A fool would have kept fighting. It takes one wiser to know when it's time to retreat and live to fight another day. Thanks, although retreating won't do much good against the High Reaver. Well, I might have just the thing for that. As a show of goodwill, I will help you construct something that should take care of the High Reaver once and for all. The Destroyer. It is a powerful weapon, once capable of undoing even the High Reaver. But there is one condition. We must work together to build it. Under the Shepherd's directions, we made a start, making what we needed to create the Destroyer. It was going to be a special build, and the Shepherd didn't have all the directions on hand. So after we had done all we could to get started, he pointed me in the right direction to learn more about how to complete the weapon. From day 50 to day 53, I left for the precarious frozen peaks, making sure I was careful to avoid the High Reaver's territory. If I got too close, no doubt he'd launch another attack on me. I was searching the dangerous peaks for a hidden cave. The shepherd said there was a secluded shrine somewhere up there, which contained a book that could tell me more about the destroyer. After a whole lot of searching, I found what I was looking for. The book was old and dusty, but it told me everything I needed to know. Long ago, a group of mystics had divided the land into different regions, and each of them had taken control of an individual region. However, they learned that one among them was building an empire on the backs of workers, and he was planning to take control of the entire overworld. He was none other than the High Reaver. When the other mystics learned about this, they crafted a magical weapon called the Destroyer. However, it backfired. They were able to weaken the High Reaver and halt his progress, but in doing so, they destroyed their primary weapon against him. But what I was still wondering was, where did I fit into all of this? What was so important about me being an elemental monkey? Those questions would have to wait. I was getting uneasy being in the frozen peaks for too long, so I made my way back to my base. From day 54 to day 57, I was on my way back to my base when I crossed paths with the last person I wanted to see, Vex! He was on his way back to the High Reaver's base after the fight with all the skeletons, and he instantly leapt at me to attack. Well, 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 what do we have here? Come to turn yourself in, little monkey? You're making my job too easy. All I have to do is beat you and walk a few more feet to the High Reaver's stronghold to collect my kudos. Back off, Vex. I'm not in the mood for you. We crossed swords once again, and I knew that the horrible henchman was trying to irk me and get under my skin. But as much as I wanted to teach him a lesson once and for all, I had to force myself to remember that I wasn't tough enough to beat him. I could hear the shepherd's wise words, too. A fool keeps fighting, but a wiser person knows when it's time to retreat. So I fled and lived a fight another day. Meanwhile, the High Reaver had been watching from afar and wasn't too pleased that I had gotten away. Vex, you buffoon! We need that elemental monkey gone for good! Only his energy can power the Destroyer. He has the potential to harness all the elements, and that makes him the perfect one to wield such a powerful weapon! Do better! From day 58 to day 62, I was finally able to make it home safely and was greeted warmly by the Mandragora Prince back at my base. I've really been taking to working on these improvements, Zozo. Come have a look. We have plenty of storage space now if you need a place to stash your weapons and armor. Sure enough, the prince had whipped up an impressive armory for me, which reminded me my iron armor and iron sword were looking pretty worse for wear. But I still had those diamonds on me, so I headed back to the caves to do some more mining and search for more. After a while spent looking, I hit the mother load. There were tons of diamonds glimmering in the cave walls, and I quickly pickled them free. Bringing them back to my base, I crafted a shiny new diamond chest plate along with a matching sword and pickaxe. These would be perfect for some added defense as well as extra damage while I was fighting, and the pick would make mining a breeze. From day 63 to day 66, the Mandragora Prince suggested I should try searching for the leftover pieces of the original destroyer to save building it from scratch. I know exactly the place you could start looking, and with your diamond pickaxe, you should be able to get there with ease. Following his directions took me to the Magma Waste, a deadly area filled with dangerous pools of lava. 
I had to watch my step and make sure I didn't slip and fall to my doom. I couldn't use my ice blast to freeze a safe path. The magma was too hot. But lucky for me, my elemental monkey agility did the trick. With enough searching, I came across an old stone structure that looked like it had been there for a long time. It was too thick for even my diamond pickaxe to get through, but there was a small slot that looked like it had been made for a key. That was a nuisance. I'd have to either finish the destroyer using the book or come back if I ever found the right key. From day 67 to day 70, the shepherd returned to my base and I was expecting we'd soon be getting back to work on building the destroyer. But it turned out there was trouble afoot and the shepherd needed my help to resolve it. I followed the shepherd to where the trouble was occurring, a clearing within the ancient glowing forest where a mighty hellhound was waiting. I'd never seen a beast like it. What could I possibly do against that? Try to connect with it, Zozo. You are the elemental monkey. You are more attuned with nature than the rest of us. Use that to speak to this creature. So I left the shepherd to do just that. Um, nice, hellhound. Maybe stop attacking skeletons? I get you're probably after a bone, right? Well then, heal, boy. The hellhound growled and bounced at me, and I had no choice but to fight back in self-defense. I tried my best not to cause too much harm to the creature. After all, it wasn't working for the High Reaver. It was just an animal living its life, like the Alpha Hyena I'd seen before. Eventually, after a lot of struggle, I managed to get the hellhound to back down. That's better. Now come and join us. I promise I mean you no harm, but a hellhound like you could help us stop the High Reaver. Oh, sorry, I mean, uh, good doggy? That seemed to work. From day 71 to day 74, I returned to my base with the hellhound in tow. But when I arrived, we were ambushed. It was Vex. He'd been following me ever since I'd clashed with him at the Frosty Peaks. So this is where you've been hiding, Zozo. Why don't you come quietly or I'll burn your base to ash. We clashed once more. My new diamond sword was definitely leaving more damage against Vex this time around, but I still wasn't strong enough to beat him. It's too late, Zozo. We already kidnapped the Mandragora Prince. You can't help anyone. <laughs> With that, Vex rushed off. I rushed inside, but it was too late. They'd gone. I was devastated. The Prince had been a helpful friend. We needed to work on improving the base, so I set about building a perimeter wall to defend against any further attacks. After all, Vex and the High Reaver now knew where we were. There was no telling if they'd come back. From his base, the High Reaver was thrilled. With the Mandragora Prince captured, there were no other rulers in the area to challenge his ascent to power. His plan to take over was once again coming to fruition. From day 75 to day 78, the Shepherd came by the base. Word had reached him and the skeletons that the Prince was captured by the Vex. And so he showed up to help with the base, finishing up the extra defenses. Vex and the High Reaver have a rather strange connection to each other. Vex has been the underling of the High Reaver for as long as anyone can remember. But he has his own ulterior motive, too. He's playing the long game, waiting for his master to take control of everything so that he can steal that power right from underneath the High Reaver. Vex wants to overthrow him after all the hard work is done. Hmm, maybe I can turn them against each other somehow. Along with that useful information, the Shepherd also offered me a fancy new weapon, a firework crossbow. This was sure to be a blast to use. With that in my arsenal, I headed off to track down Vex and get the Mandragora Prince back to safety. From day 79 to day 84, I followed the tracks left behind by Vex and came across him not long after. He still had the Prince held hostage and there was no time to waste. I had to save my friend and stop the High Reaver's henchmen once and for all. So coming along to join us, Zozo, you and the Prince here can be taken before the High Reaver together. How long do you think it'll take your boss to realize you want to overthrow him? Oh, you've done it now. I'll make sure he never finds out when I silence you, little monkey! I opened fire with my firework crossbow, blinding Vex to start as I rushed in with my diamond sword. But he quickly regained the upper hand, and even with the help of my special attacks and new weapon, I couldn't beat him. Uh -oh. I ran away from Vex, instead meeting up with the imprisoned Mandragora Prince. Zozo, here, I lifted this from Vex's pocket when he captured me. The Mandragora Prince threw something towards me, a golden apple. You're an elemental monkey. You're meant to be one with nature. Maybe this magic apple can help you. I rushed and grabbed the apple. Eating it, I could feel myself getting stronger. It was like my connection to nature had been strengthened more than ever before. Vex started to back away. I now had 60 hearts and I had unlocked a new ability, a powerful whirlwind attack. 
I had been connected to the element of air. I left the prince and ran back to battle the Vex one last time. No, no! With a huge gust of wind, I was able to finally defeat Vex. He fell from the frozen peaks until we could no longer see him, leaving the Mandragora Prince and I free to return to the safety of my base. From day 85 to day 89, the Prince and I returned to the base, and he imparted some new information to me. You see, we Mandragora aren't just rival rulers to the High Reaver. He's also afraid of me because I am the last descendant of the mystics who weakened him and caused his workers to turn against him. And he wasn't the only one to survive. This key has been in my family for many years. It will unlock the tomb of the last mystic. And in there, you'll find what you need to finish the destroyer. With the magic key from the prince, I headed off to the dangerous magma waste to retrieve the components from the original destroyer. I followed his directions and came across the tomb of the last fallen mystic using the magic key to open it up and get inside. However, there was a security measure in place, just in case the High Reaver got his hands on the key. It was a ferocious Ravager guarding the tomb! I drew my diamond sword and hit the Ravager with a blast from my whirlwind attack, knocking it over. I leapt into battle, swinging my sword and even getting a few scratches of my claw attacks in there for good measure. The Ravager was tough, but I took it down and I was able to claim the component I needed to complete the Destroyer! From day 90 to day 94, I was making my way back across the precarious magma ways when a familiar foe approached me. It was the High Reaver! Ah, there you are, my former friend. We aren't friends. You tricked me, Reaver. I know all about who you are now and the horrible things you've done. What about you, Zozo? You did follow my orders for a time, didn't you? Without you, the Onion Queen would still be alive. So would poor Vex. It isn't too late to redeem yourself, though. Come on, join me. I have need for a new henchman, now that you've bested my last one. I won't make that mistake twice. I clashed swords with the High Reaver. I knew I couldn't beat him on my own, but I just had to get away. If I could just make it back to my base and finish building the Destroyer, I'd finally have a chance at beating him. But the High Reaver must have known what I was trying to do and used one of his energy blasts to send me flying back into the Mystic's tomb. He caused a cave-in, sealing me inside, and dashed off with the piece I needed to finish the Destroyer. I was trapped! From day 95 to day 97, I had to mine my way out of the tomb with my diamond pickaxe. Once I was free, I rushed to warn my allies. Now that the High Reaver had the component of the original Destroyer, he'd no doubt be going after anyone who could help me finish mine from scratch. As I made my way back to the Flower Forest, I was horrified to see the skeleton's hideout in ruins. I found the shepherd amongst the wreckage, and he was on the verge of death. I tried to find something that could heal him, but it was already too late. Zozo. You have to know your part in all of this. The Destroyer is just a way to channel power, but it's useless without an already powerful being to wield it. You are that being, an elemental monkey. In your hands, your connection to the natural world could be directed through the Destroyer. All the elements combining to defeat the High Reaver. Avenge us, Zozo, put an end to his tyranny once and for all. As the shepherd passed on, I swore I'd get revenge and stop the Reaver. On day 98, I rushed back to my base. If the High Reaver had attacked the shepherd to stop me from finishing the Destroyer, then maybe he'd been back to my home to wreck the progress I'd made on it so far. Sure enough, I was met with an awful sight I'd been dreading. My base was in ruins. The Destroyer I'd been working on was wrecked. Even the sheep pen had been smashed to bits. I sat in what was left of my base, feeling defeated. I'd fought so hard, and now it felt like everything I'd gone through had been for nothing. The High Reaver was so strong, he'd put me right back to square one, just like that. Don't give up, Zozo. Mandragora Prince, at least someone survived. You can't let this stop you, Zozo. Don't you see? This carnage is meant to slow you down because you're closer than ever to beating the High Reaver. Destroying your base and attacking your allies is him acting out of desperation. Remember what the Shepherd told you? Live to fight another day. And I'm still alive, which means I can still stop him. Exactly. And he's made one mistake. He's made it even easier for you to stop him. 
because he has the peace of the Destroyer. With my elemental power, it can still be used to stop him. On day 99, I made my way back to the Frozen Peaks, this time intentionally going to the High Reaver's stronghold. He had no army serving under him. He was just one crazed monster trying to scrabble up power. All I needed to do was get that piece of the Destroyer back. Ah, Zozo. I expect you're not too happy with me. Yeah, but you're gonna be even less happy when you see what I've got planned. What? You think you can beat me? You've lost every battle we've ever had. You'd be a fool to keep fighting. But a wiser person knows when it's time to retreat. We clashed once more, but this time, I wasn't trying to beat the High Reaver one-on-one. -on -one, but I knew I couldn't. Instead, my focus was on one thing, getting back the piece of the Destroyer he'd stolen. He was too focused on trying to defeat me that the High Reaver didn't realize what my plan was, until it was too late. I grabbed the component and rushed away, making it back to my base as fast as I could before he could catch up to me. But he wouldn't have to wait too long for me to come back. At my base, with the Mandragora Prince's help, we used the ancient book I'd found and the knowledge he had from his mystic ancestors to focus all of my elemental power into the broken piece of the Destroyer. It wasn't going to work the way it was intended, but we had a different plan. Boom! On day 100, our plan had worked! I'd fused with the Destroyer and absorbed its power. Now my connection to nature as an elemental monkey was greater than ever. I was so attuned to the elements, I could even restore all the damage done to my base. This would finally allow me to get the upper hand against the High Reaver. Whooshing there with the speed of the wind, I arrived back at the stronghold in the frozen peaks as fast as I'd left. The High Reaver was surprised to see me back so soon, and I used that to my advantage. We fought for the last time. I had all the powers and skills I had learned along the way at my disposal. I used my mighty whirlwind attack to knock the Reaver off his feet, then swiped at him with my diamond sword and my claws. Whenever he'd attack me, I'd move out of the way with that smooth fluidity of water, then turn hard as ice when I needed to return the blows to him. You combined with the Destroyer? No, this is not how this is supposed to go. It was a long, hard fight, but by remembering all the lessons I'd learned, I was finally able to land a final strike on the evil High Reaver! No! With one more hit, he fell from his stronghold at the top of the Frosty Peaks and plummeted to the ice below. I had done it! I defeated the High Reaver and stopped his plans to rule the overworld. On day one, I spawned in as an elemental shark in the middle of a tropical rainforest. And before I could understand what any of that even meant, I was surrounded by a gang of terrifying fire elementals, led by a massive magma golem. They looks like we got him, boss. The last elemental who wouldn't bend the knee for you. What? I feel like I'm missing something here. Everyone laughed at me for saying that, and it definitely didn't make me feel good. The magma golem was the only one who remained steely and serious. I think I'm missing something too. I'm missing the part where you swore absolute loyal to me, Magnus the Magma Golem, Lord of the Elementals. Who made you Lord of the Elementals? I've never even heard of you. I made myself the Lord, and if you don't bow to me, I'll make you into shock elemental sushi. I think I'd rather make myself scarce. Before the Magma Golem or his fire elementals could attack me, I used one of my elemental powers to warp out of there and run away as fast as I could. As if this day wasn't stressful enough, as I was running away, I got incredibly hungry and didn't have any food. Did this get any worse? The only food I could find in the tropical rainforest was some apples, but it was being guarded by an angry earth elemental. Would you be down to share one of those apples with me? No, these apples can only be enjoyed by servants of Magnus, Lord of the Elementals. Is there anyone around here who doesn't work for this guy? I fought the Earth Elemental with my bare fins until I gave up and ran away. Finally, I was able to at least enjoy an apple. This is the one nice thing that's happened to me today. What's going on here? On day two, I kept running through the tropical forest until I was convinced I'd lost the magma golem and his nasty gang of fire elementals. If there's one thing I can be sure of in this crazy, confusing world, it's that those guys are bad news. When I felt safe, I punched down one of the trees and made myself a wooden pickaxe. And with that, it wasn't hard to mine down into the ground and collect myself enough stone blocks to get started on a base. 
I think after all this craziness, I've really earned a roof over my head tonight. I used the stone and wood I collected to start building a base with a basic bedroom and living area, complete with a sofa and a couch. I also made myself a stone sword and a stone pickaxe. It wasn't much, but at least it was something. As long as that awful magma golem doesn't come and try to burn it down. But I soon wished I hadn't said that, because a few of the magma golem's fire elementals came blazing through the forest towards me. You thought you could escape us, didn't you, kid? Nobody escapes Magnus or his minions. Sooner or later, you're gonna give in to his demands or be destroyed. But why would I want to work for a guy like him? What is he even planning? You're not important enough to know that. Come on, boys, let's torch him. The fire elementals came for me, and I used my stone sword to fight them back until they were nothing more than ashes. I still don't understand what's happening here. What is this Magnus guy planning, and what part do I play in all of this? You better watch to the end if you want to help me find out. On day three, I decided it was time to investigate what was going on. After all, if I didn't know the truth, I was at a disadvantage. I started exploring around the tropical rainforest until I found someone who wanted to talk to me about it, and that someone just so happened to be a scary-looking monster mushroom named Fungo. To my surprise, he was friendly. Please, Fungo, tell me about what the deal is with Magnus, the so-called Lord of the Elements. He's been hassling me ever since I spawned here. Ah, that makes a lot of sense. You're a shock elemental, right? And as his name suggests, Magnus, the Lord of the Elementals, wants to get control of as many of the Elementals as he can. And if you want to get them too, chances are the only way you're going to be able to do it is by taking the fight to him. Defeat Magnus? Maybe if I get stronger I could do that, but why? I don't understand why he's doing this. Well, take a seat on that log over there, buddy because that's a much longer and wilder story. So I did as I was told and sat down, but nothing could prepare me for what I was about to hear. From day four to day five, I sat down and listened to the story Fungo the Monster Mushroom told me about Magnus the Magma Golem. First, you need to understand that golems are always created by villagers. They are not natural creatures, and as such, they are completely at odds with the natural elements of the world. But when Magnus was created, he learned to hate his own unnaturalness. He was so frustrated by it that he wanted to conquer the elements and make them work for him. One by one, he subdued the fire elementals, the earth elementals, the air elementals, and the water elementals. Through their allegiance, he may be able to control all the forces of the natural world. And in order to defeat him before he becomes too powerful, you'll need to master all four of the elements and gain their powers. Oh, just like in Avatar The Last Airbender. Wait, you've seen Avatar? Sweet, that's going to make all of this a lot easier to understand. Be careful out there, Zozo. If you can get strong enough and gain all these powers, you can save us all. But to help with the learning process, you'll need to find a mentor. Do you know where I can find one? Nope. Good luck. From day six to day eight, with all the new information that Fungo the Monster Mushroom had given me stewing around in my head, I started making my way back to my base. So, I need to find a mentor. How can I track one down? It's not like they have a directory website. But my frustration and self-pity was interrupted by seeing an innocent swamp pig being picked on by more of those evil fire elementals. Please, guys, leave me alone. I'm just doing my daily exercise. <laughs> Little piggy's trying to exercise. Hilarious. We can help you warm up. Oh, yeah, we'll fry your bacon. <laughs> These are extremely insensitive jokes, guys. Please leave me alone. But I knew they'd never leave that poor swamp pig alone. Not unless I made them. That's why I pulled out my stone sword and ran in to fight them off. Leave that innocent pig alone, you meanies. It didn't take me long to defeat them all and rescue the swamp pig from a fiery doom. Needless to say, he was relieved. Thank you, kind stranger. I'm Sammy, Sammy the Swamp Pig. You have done me a great kindness today, and I'll never forget it. No problem, Sammy. I'm Zozo, by the way. Say, do you have any idea where I might find a mentor? I really need one to help me save the world. Well, I did hear rumors about a great teacher who lived near water somewhere, but 
That's all I know. Still, I want to help you, Zozo. I really owe you one. How about you come back to my base? I could really use some allies right now. I led Sammy the Swamp Pig back into my base and started building a new room in my base for him to stay in. And make sure you keep watching until the end because the craziest parts are yet to come. From day 9 to day 10, I found a huge underground cavern in the tropical rainforest where I could search for rarer materials. The deeper and darker I descended in, the more veins of iron ore I found. I mined and collected the iron ore and then constructed a furnace underground to smelt into iron ingots. Now it's time to make myself some awesome new equipment! I made a set of iron armor, an iron sword, and an iron pickaxe. And not a second too soon, as I heard something terrifying skittering around in the dark! I turned and saw a giant skulk scorpion crawling towards me, looking like it was ready to attack. And it turned out that it actually was! I tried to attack it with my iron sword, but it didn't seem to have much of an effect on the monster, which was as strong and fast as it was angry! In the end, I needed to use my location warping ability to zap out of there and run deeper into the darkness of the underground cavern. Can't see how this would ever end badly. From day 11 to day 12, all I could do was try to hide deeper in the underground cavern and hope that the Skulk Scorpion didn't find me down there. How am I going to save the world from a powerful magma golem if I can't even defeat a nasty underground bug? Deep in the dark, my greatest enemy wasn't the Skulk Scorpion or even Magnus, the Lord of the Elementals. It was just pure boredom. So when I found a dusty old book, you can only imagine how relieved I was. I certainly never expected that this book would contain the secret to Magnus's rise to power. It was filled with strange Latin text, but then I opened the book to a section called the Three Enforcers. It described three terrifying and powerful golems who worked for Magnus. The Bone Golem, the Diamond Golem, and the Bedrock Golem. These three golems were vital for keeping all the elementals in line. And if I was able to defeat all three of the enforcer golems, Magnus's control over elementals would probably collapse. Now I know what I need to do. If I defeat the three enforcers, defeating Magnus afterwards would be easy. But I was celebrating a little too loudly. Suddenly, a vicious fire salamander, a powerful underworld creature, ran towards me. He was a tough mob to defeat since he shot flames at me. He had something that looked like an organic turret protruding from his back. A truly bizarre and scary mob, but with the knowledge of what I needed to do fueling me, I was able to do it. And this gave me enough XP to level up, becoming a bigger, stronger elemental shark with 18 hearts and the ability to breathe fire. Looks like I've mastered one element, three to go. Keep watching to see what I evolve into next. From day 13 to day 15, I returned to my base, bigger and stronger than ever before. And when I was back, I saw that Sammy the Swamp Pig had made an awesome addition to the base while I was gone. A whole new floor! Whoa, Sammy! This room looks so cool! What exactly is it? Look, it's a lounge area, Zozo. You need to stay relaxed if you want to be in harmony with the four elements. An excellent idea, Sammy! Do you have any news on where I might be able to find the mentor I've been searching for too? I've heard of some strange activity near a pond deep in the tropical rainforest. Maybe that has something to do with it. On Sammy's advice, I ventured out deeper into the tropical rainforest until I found the pond and what looked like a crimson wizard waiting outside it. Stay back, Elemental! I will not serve your master! He fired an energy blast at me that took off a few of my hearts and prepared to fire another! Wait! You don't understand! I'm an elemental, but I don't work for Magnus! I'm trying to defeat him! I'm just looking for a mentor that will help train me to stop him! Oh, I see. Sorry about firing an energy blast at you there, old chap. You can't be too careful these days with Magnus and his minions around. It's okay. I understand. So, can you mentor me, Mr. Wizard? I'm afraid that isn't my area of expertise, but I also wish to stop the diabolical Magnus. You and I can work together to make that a reality. It never hurts to have magic on your side, I guess. Come on back to my base with me. Let's work together. Lead the way, Elemental Shark. I set off back towards my base with one more ally in tow. From day 16 to day 19, I returned to my base with the Crimson Wizard. Because Sammy the Swamp Pig figured I might be returning with a mentor, he had already built a room for the Crimson Wizard. My base is practically becoming a hotel. I should start charging people. I'd be happy to pay. This room looks wonderful. Before you get too comfortable, Crimson Wizard, I need some advice. 
Do you have any idea where I should go next in my quest to master the elements and take on Magnus? Good question, Zozo. Personally, I would suggest the Mojave Desert. To master all the elements, you must first experience them all. That sounds like a good idea to me. Time to go. After a couple days of traveling, I'd reached the Mojave Desert and started searching around for any clues as to what I needed to do next. The last thing I expected was to run into a talking desert cat. Hey, little kitty, do you have any idea what I can do to help defeat Magnus, Lord of the Elementals? No, Magnus? You mean the magma golem? I think some of his henchmen are around here, just a little further west in this very desert. Maybe go defeat them, and I'll see whatever information I can provide afterwards. That's so convenient! Thank you, Desert Cat! From day 20 to day 22, following the cat's instructions, I went further west into the Mojave Desert. It didn't take me long to find a gang of rowdy air elementals who were just itching for a fight. Hey, look! It's that elemental shark who defied the orders of Lord Magnus. Yep, that's me. But I'm not here for you small fries. That'd be a waste of my time. Small fries? Oh, buddy, you are gonna regret saying that. They flew over to attack me, but I was ready. With my iron sword, I cut them down and defeated each one of them until I was the last one standing. Or so I thought. Turned out, one of Magnus's head enforcers, the Bone Golem, had been sneaking up behind me. I turned just as the Bone Golem hit me, taking off a shocking number of hearts. Immediately, I was fighting for my life, striking him with my iron sword, but it wasn't having any effect. He was so confident, he started throwing his own bones at me. I needed to pull out the big guns and use my elemental powers on this nasty overgrown skeleton. Fire breath, go! I breathed a powerful jet of flames onto the Bone Golem, finally defeating him. And with that, I was a third of the way to bringing down Magnus and his empire of evil. From day 23 to day 26, I went back to tell the desert cat about my success. Hey, little kitty, I found those henchmen and I kicked their butts. Meow, yeah, that's great news. Those jerks kept making crazy wind and messing up my fur. Now I can nap in peace without worrying about any air elementals bothering me. So, what can you tell me about Magnus and how can I defeat him? Well, Magnus doesn't like to fight his own fights. He prefers to have his henchmen take care of that for him. So if you can defeat all of his elemental goons, he won't have anyone left to fight for him, and he'll have to face you himself. I guess I just need to make sure I'm strong enough when the time comes. Meow, that sounds about right. Oh, before I forget, maybe you can use this. The cat gave me a potion of power. Thanks, I can definitely use this. Glad to hear it. Now scram, it's my nap time and I just found the perfect sunny spot. You got it. I left the cat and continued walking through the desert until I found a new area. When I got there, I was jumped by some earth elementals. Say, it's the wise guy who thinks he can defy Lord Magnus. Let's get him, boys. Not if I get you first. Fire breath, go! I blew a blast of fire at the earth elementals and followed it up with an attack with my iron sword. Pretty soon, all but one of the earth elementals was defeated. Wait, if you let me go, I can give you some information. Oh yeah? Yeah, Lord Magnus' headquarters is guarded by earth, air, and water elementals. Is that helpful? Yeah, get out of here. He ran away, and I took the moment of victory to drink my potion of power. When I did, I gained 24 hearts, evolving into an even bigger version of myself. And I gained the Earth ability. I can shoot an Earth charge that leaves behind a pile of dirt on the ground. Looks like I just mastered Earth. Two down, two to go. From day 27 to day 31, I headed back to my base. On the way there, I passed the pond again. There was a diamond golem there, waiting for me. He attacked me, and I tried to fight back, but he was way too strong. In the end, I had to run away before he dealt me too much damage. Oh, that was a close one. I was scared he'd chase after me, but finally I made it back to my base, safe and sound. Wow, Zozo, look at you. You're so big and strong. Indeed, your stature is most impressive. Thanks, guys, but I'm not done yet. I've still got two elements left to master, and I need to get way stronger if I'm going to defeat Magnus. Still, you must take time to celebrate how far you have already come. Speaking of progress, I have a sense that there is something useful to you waiting at a nearby location, the Rainbow Beach. 
then I'd better get going and see what it is. From day 32 to day 35, I traveled to the Rainbow Beach to see what the wizard might have sensed out there. I sure wish magic would be more specific. Oh well, I guess that's just how magic is. As I was looking around, I spotted an iron golem up ahead. Hey there, do you know anything about Magnus? Don't you ever say that name to me! How dare you bring him up in my presence! Oh wait, I, I didn't mean to offend you! Before I could explain, he attacked me! I drew my sword and fought back, but he was really strong! Turns out though, so was I! After fighting for a while, it became pretty clear that we were evenly matched. Please, let's stop this and just talk! You're lucky I'm getting tired. Fine, talk. I get the feeling you don't like Magnus much. Don't like him? That's an understatement. We used to be best friends a long time ago. One day though, he started getting obsessed with the elements. He wanted to control them, all of them. And when I tried to argue with him, elementals think they're so great, huh? See how great they think they are when I find a way to control every element. What's wrong with you having one specialty? All I do is iron, but you don't see me complaining. That's because you're a loser, and I don't need to spend my time with losers. If you're not with me, you're against me. He knocked me out and left. I never saw him again. Pretty soon, I started hearing about what he was getting up to, and I realized that the friend I used to know was gone. His jealousy and hunger for power turned him into a villain. That's terrible. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to master all the elements too, but it's so I can beat him and stop him from hurting people. If that's true, then that is a noble goal. I wish you luck, Mr. Shark. Thanks. The name's Zozo. From day 36 to day 39, I traveled back to the tropical rainforest. I really need to upgrade my armor. Let's see what I can find here. If armor upgrades you do seek, then it is to me that you should speak. Who's there? And why are you rhyming? A monster mushroom jumped out from behind a tree. Sorry, when I get nervous I talk in rhymes. I know where you can get some upgrades. Lord Magnus's base is empty right now, and there are plenty of supplies to be found in there. It's not like he deserves them. You might as well take them. Sounds good to me, but where's his base? In the swamp surrounded by lava. Do me a favor though. If you see a big mean fire elemental running with a gang of other fiery jerks, would you defeat him for me? He tried to hurt me, and I'd rather he not get a chance to try again. You got it. Thanks for the help. Following the monster mushroom's directions, I managed to make my way to the swamps and Magnus's base. From day 40 to day 43, I fought my way into Magnus's base. There was only a few wither skeleton guards, and it was easy to beat them. Then I ran inside. Jeez, this place really suits the guy. It looks as mean as he is. I didn't have much time to look around because the diamond golem from earlier was inside. Uh-oh, this guy again. I've got to do a better job this time. I started with my fire breath, then followed it up with a sword attack. It was pretty tough, and I wasn't sure if I would be able to do it. But finally, I was able to defeat him. When the diamond golem fell, he dropped a whole bunch of diamonds. This is just what I need. Now I can go back to the base and upgrade my gear. I grabbed all the diamonds. Now I've got to get out of here before Magnus gets back. I may be a lot stronger than I used to be, but I'm still not ready to face him. Maybe with some upgraded armor and weapons though, I'll be closer to my goal. From day 44 to day 49, I traveled back to my base and got to work on upgrading my armor and weapons. Using all of the diamonds I got from that diamond golem, I was able to craft a diamond pickaxe, a diamond sword, and some diamond armor. Awesome, look at all this stuff. I feel more powerful already. Okay, back to exploring. I need to see what else I can do to improve and work toward mastering those last two elements. I headed out into the rainforest and started exploring. As I did, I came across a group of fire elementals. They didn't see me at first, but I could hear them. You guys remember that loser mushroom that got away from us before? I think I know where we can find him and finish the job. Nice, he was so pathetic. <laughs> Let's go get him. That's the fire elemental he was talking about. If I fight and defeat these guys, he won't have to worry about them anymore. Wait, there's some shocky freak listening to us. That's the guy the boss told us about. Yep, and I'm here to kick your butts. 
Using my new diamond sword, I was able to defeat those fire elementals in no time. This new gear sure is great. I can't wait to see the look on Magnus's face when he realizes I'm finally strong enough to take him down. But I can't get ahead of myself. I gotta focus on mastering water and air. Time to get moving. From day 50 to day 53, I traveled into the Red Rock Highlands to seek out new ways to master the elements. I feel like the Highlands can teach me air stuff, right? That seems right. Or maybe water. Is there water here? As I explored, I came across an open book lying on the ground. Inside it said, I'm gentle enough to wash your hair, light enough to fly through the sky, strong enough to crack rocks. What am I? That doesn't make any sense. How can one thing wash hair, fly in the air, and break rocks? I don't get it. It took me a little while to think about it, but suddenly it came to me. Wait a second, it's water. That's right, Zozo. An earth elemental jumped out at me. Gets you smarter than you look. Too bad you'll never get a chance to master water because Lord Magnus sent me to take you out. Out to dinner? No, out of this world. Oh, oh no. I got my diamond sword ready and started swinging. I followed it up with some fire breath and the earth elemental crumbled. After the fight, I could feel myself getting bigger and stronger. I'm evolving again. As I got stronger, I gained more hearts. Now I have 35 of them. I also gained the ice blast ability. I can freeze enemies in place with this. I guess I finally mastered water. Only one more to go. From day 54 to day 57, I returned to my base. The Crimson Wizard had a surprise for me. He built some protective walls around the base while I was gone. As a token of appreciation for letting me stay at your home rent free, I thought I might work on our defenses a little bit. These walls look really nice. I feel safer already. Thanks. No problem. Now I'm feeling pretty good, but I know I need to get stronger and master the fourth and final element. I need some help. I wonder if there's anyone who can mentor me. I looked around the base for ideas, but as awesome as my new friends were, none of them would be able to teach me about fighting. Wait a second, that iron golem I met before was really tough and cool. I should go ask him if he can help me. I returned to the place where I met the iron golem and sure enough, he was there. Hey, it's me, Zozo, remember me? I do. How is your quest to master the elements and defeat Magnus going? I've got three out of four down, but I still need to get stronger. Would you train me? Train you to take down Magnus? It would be an honor. Let's get to work, Zozo. From day 58 to day 62, I started my training with the Iron Golem. He set up a wall of blocks for me. You see these blocks? Break them without touching them. Uh, oh, I'll try my best. I used my fire breath to break the blocks. Now try to dodge my attacks. He ran at me and attacked, and I dodged. He had me do a bunch of different challenges and training exercises. I had to run up and down the beach, go out into the water and swim back, and test out all my new powers. By the time I was done, I was exhausted, but I also gained more strength. Sweet, this will help my sword hit even harder. But oh, I haven't mastered air yet. Not yet, but you've made some great progress. I'm proud of you. Thanks for all your help. You've been a great mentor. From day 63 to day 66, I went back to my base. When I got there, I saw a group of water elementals running away from the base. What the, oh no. They had destroyed my base and destroyed some of the walls. Zozo, help! These miscreants kidnapped the swamp pig! No! I was able to catch up with one of the water elementals and I hit him with my pile of dirt! Tell me where they took my friend or I'll hit you again! Zoinks! Don't do that! They took the pig to Lord Magnus's base! There's a prison cell attached to it! They're gonna throw him in there! And I've gotta get over there too! No time to waste! I need to save my friend! I let the water elemental go and set off toward the Wailing Garth to rescue the Swamp Pig. From day 67 to day 70, I traveled to Magnus's base on a Swamp Pig rescue mission. When I reached the swamps, I saw a big cage in the base. And there was the Swamp Pig, trapped inside. Don't worry, I'll get you out of there. Yeah, right. You'll have to go through us first. The water elementals closed in around me, but I had a plan. Maybe I should give you guys the cold shoulder. I fired my ice blast ability at the water elementals, freezing them in place. Then I used my diamond sword to take them out one by one. The last water elemental dropped a key to the cage. Now let's get you free. I used the key to unlock the cage and let the swamp pig out. Thank you, Zalzo. I knew you'd save me. What are friends for? Now let's get out of here before Magnus comes back. 
We ran back to the base together, and much to my surprise, when we got back, all the damage was fixed. Wow, who did this? I did. I also added some guard towers so we can see threats coming if any more of Magnus's henchmen decide to attack us again. Awesome, thank you so much. From day 71 to day 74, I wasn't sure what to do next. Can I learn about how to master air? I just don't know. <gasps> Wait a second, there was that Skulk Scorpion I couldn't fight before. I bet I could beat him now. Maybe then I'll figure out what to do next. With my new plan to fight the Skulk Scorpion, I headed down into the underground cavern. Hello, Mr. Scorpion, are you down here still? Sure enough, there it was. The scorpion ran at me and tried to sting me with its stinger. But I fought back with a fire breath and my sword. Then I used my ice blast to freeze it and follow up with the sword to finish it off. I did it, I did it. Hey, look at this. There was a book on the ground. The book of exposition. What's it say? The answers you seek lie deeper in the cavern. But there, you must face the bedrock golem. Well, who am I to argue with a random book? Let's go. From day 75 to day 78, I followed the instructions from the Book of Exposition and headed deeper into the underground cavern. There, I saw a group of earth elementals and a big bedrock golem behind them. Before I could say anything or attack, the earth elementals spotted me. I've had enough of this clown. Why don't you just give up already? Because what Magnus is doing is wrong, and I can't just stand by and let him get away with it. OK, then don't stand by. Just stand. Die. The earth elementals rushed at me, but I was ready for them. I fought them with my diamond sword. Once they were all gone, I turned my attention to the bedrock golem. Now it's your turn. He was much tougher than the earth elementals. In fact, he was tougher than anyone else I had fought so far. I had to use all of my special abilities to knock him down and out of his misery. That was a relief and good because I felt myself evolving again. My hearts increased to 80 and I gained the ability whirlwind attack. I did it, I mastered air, I've gotta tell everyone. From day 79 to day 84, I ran back to the base to deliver the good news. Hey, look, look. I showed my friends my new evolved form and tested out my whirlwind attack for them. Wow, Zozo, you're amazing. Most impressive. So now what should I do? Excellent question, my friend. I believe the answers await us at the Red Rock Highlands. Shall we go there now? Yes, let's go. From day 85 to day 89, the Crimson Wizard and I travel to the Red Rock Highlands. Okay, we're here. Now what? Let me see. I had hoped the Highlands would reveal the truth to me when we arrived, but it remains unclear. Perhaps we should see if we can acquire any additional items that might allow you to upgrade your gear? Sure, why not? Together, we searched the area for cool items. I found some more diamonds and gathered them up. From day 90 to day 94, I was gathering diamonds while the Crimson Wizard headed back to the base. All of a sudden, Magnus appeared behind me. Still haven't given up yet, I see. Nope, and I never will. I finally mastered all the elements, and I'm coming for you. Oh yeah? How are you going to do that from underground? What? What are you talking about? The one element you haven't mastered. The element of surprise. Magnus hit me hard, knocking my diamonds out of my hands. Then he got me again, knocking me out cold. When I woke up, I was in an underground chamber. Oh no, I'm trapped in here. What should I do? Wait a second, Magnus didn't count on me still having this iron pickaxe. I'll use it to tunnel out of here. I wasn't sure how long I'd been out, so I had to work fast and make up for lost time. I dug faster than I'd ever dug before until I broke through to the surface. Nice try, Magnus, but you can't get rid of me that easily. From day 95 to day 97, I started making my way back to my base. On the way, I was ambushed by a group of Earth Elementals. See, I told the boss burying him wouldn't work. Weeds always grow back. I'm not a weed, I'm an elemental shark, and I'm stronger than you, and I'll prove it. I fought back, and with my mastery of all four elements, it didn't take long for me to beat them. I finished my fight with the whirlwind attack and blew them away. Awesome, okay, no time to celebrate yet. I've gotta get back to the base. On day 98, I finally made my way back to my base. Zozo, where have you been? We were worried about you. Magnus surprised me and trapped me in an underground chamber. I had to dig myself out. Monstrous. That's awful. It's OK. I'm totally fine. I made it back, and we still have time for me to use my mastery of the elements to defeat Magnus and restore peace. It's going to be great. 
You're right, Zozo. Gee, this sure has been a wild adventure. And to see more adventures like it, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and search Zo Zo. Zozo, allow me to accompany you to Magnus's lair. There, you can finally end this nightmare for good. On day 99, the Crimson Wizard walked with me all the way to the swamps and Magnus's base. He couldn't come with me, but I didn't want him to. It was important for me to face Magnus on my own. There, outside the base, were earth elementals, air elementals, and water elementals guarding it. I was pretty nervous at first because there were loads of them and they all attacked me. But I knew I could do it. I fought my way through the elemental guards, freezing them with my ice blast, burning them with my fire breath, and blowing them away with my whirlwind attack. It took a while to get through all of them, but in the end, I managed. Phew, all that fighting made me hungry. Magnus must be anticipating me because he really did gather all the remaining elementals to guard his base. Now, let me find him. On day 100, I headed into Magnus's base to finally complete my quest. He was sitting on a throne, waiting for me. I escaped your trap. So I see. I had a feeling you might. It doesn't matter. You're going to lose. I don't think I am. See, there's something you don't get about the elements. They require balance. They're equal. None of them are better than the others. Elements don't have lords. They're all equal and work together. Foolish words from a foolish shark. No more talking. Let's fight. He didn't have to tell me twice. He didn't even have to tell me once. I was already getting my sword ready. I used my dirt ability to hopefully trap him, but he dodged it. He came back at me with an attack, but I dodged it and attacked again. All of a sudden, Magnus started shaking and growing. He evolved into a bigger, stronger version of himself right before my eyes. Uh-oh, I've got to step up my game. Ice time! I used my ice ability to freeze Magnus so he wouldn't have a chance to hit me with his new evolved strength. This gave me just enough time to use all the other elements back to back. Earth, fire, air. With all my powers combined, I finally defeated Magnus. It's over. Now we can all coexist in peace again. On day one, I spawned as an itty bitty fire Godzilla. This is rad. But wait, I've only got three hearts. What? That's not rad at all. But when I focus real hard, I can make little fires. Look, I just set that tree on fire. Uh oh, it looks like I upset the baboons who were living there. They're coming after me. I better hightail it out of here. I ran off deep into the forest. Being a tiny baby fire Godzilla wasn't working out great for me so far. Maybe if I can get bigger and stronger, I can use my powers to help people rather than just burn their houses down. That'll help me make some friends around here. Maybe that big, tough, warped Moscow will be my friend. Hey, I'm Zozo. I'm pretty new around here. Wanna hang out? Hey, hey, not so fast, buddy. You wanna hang out here? You gotta pay the toll. Empty your pockets, little fire Godzilla. But I don't have any money. Then I guess you better come with me, Zozo. If you can't pay, you gotta work. That was another bridge I'd already burned. I needed to run before the warped Moscow could get his big buggy hands on me. I grabbed a few sticks from the forest and hid in a cave. These would make some pretty good torches with a little bit of my fire, so it won't be too dark in here. I proceeded to place down some torches before deciding to go to sleep for the night. I'm gonna need to get a lot stronger if I want to last out here. This place isn't kind to baby fire Godzillas like me. On day two, I woke up in the cave to find my torches had gone out overnight. It was so cold and dark. What if there are spiders in here? I should get moving. I left the cave and entered the forest to explore my surroundings. Wow, this forest is huge! So many trees, so much wood to burn. I needed to be careful in here or I'd set everything on fire. When I build my own base, it should probably be made out of stone. I needed to break down a couple of these trees and gather some sticks and wood to make a wooden pickaxe. Perfect, this will be great for mining stone. Now I needed to find a good place to build my base. Maybe somewhere around here? Wait, has somebody already built a cabin here? What's happening here? A druid rushed out of the cabin. Hey, hey, keep your distance, friendo. I just finished this place. I don't need you burning it down. I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to burn your cabin down. I just needed to find a place to make my base. Base? What? Are you one of Lochnar's guys? What? No, I'm Zozo. Who's Lochnar? He's a necromancer. He's trying to raise an army of the dead. He and his boys have been harassing people about money around here lately. The druid returned back into his cabin after bidding me farewell. Money? That sounds just like that warped Moscow from yesterday. He must have worked for this Lochnar guy. 
I better start mining for stone near the druid's cabin. He'd probably make a decent neighbor. By day three, I started gathering materials for my base. I used my wooden pickaxe to start mining stone in a cave next to the druid's place. Hope he doesn't mind a little construction noise. Hey, keep down that racket, Zozo. I'm reading. Now that I know there's a necromancer out there building an army of the dead, I should probably go pay attention to home security. First of all, I took the time to clear out an area and build a big stone wall. Yes. This should keep out that warped Moscow if he tries to hassle me for more money. And I won't be able to accidentally burn this wall down either. While I was at it, I needed to get myself a weapon. Maybe I could use some of my spare sticks and wood to make a wooden sword. Hopefully I don't burn it to a crisp. Now I'm looking well prepared. While I was making my way towards the druid's cabin, I noticed something crawling out of the forest. It looked like an elder skulk. Better take care of it before it gets too close to my base. Don't you know it's rude to trespass, Mr. Skulk? Let's go! Hiya! With this sword, the Elder Skulk was no match for me. After I hit it a few times, skillfully dodging its attempts to hit me back, it went scuttling off into the forest again. Nobody beats Fire Godzilla! And clearly that fight made a big difference, because I was starting to get bigger and stronger. I had five hearts now, and I could let out a terrifying Godzilla roar! On days four and five, I decided to go a little further into the forest to mine some more stone for my base. The wall was nice, but it wasn't exactly cozy. I needed a roof over my head. I already used some of my spare stone to make a stone pickaxe. But when I ventured out into the deep part of the woods, I ran into an old enemy, the Warped Moscow. You really thought you could get away without paying the toll? You really have no idea who you're dealing with, kid. You don't want my boss to have a problem with you. Your boss? Is he a necromancer? <laughs> you're smarter than you look, Zozo. My boss, Lochnar the Necromancer. He's gonna come take over all this soon enough. And if you're not with him, you're against him. I'd never be the guy who wants to take over a forest by force. I may burn stuff down sometimes, but I'm still a good guy. Then I guess I've got to destroy you. The Moscow came at me so fast, I was knocked back off my feet. I pulled out my wooden sword and tried to parry all of his attacks. You can't hold me off forever, Zozo. But I was a little faster than he was. Even with my wooden sword, I was able to get the jump on the warped Moscow and defeat him. Looks like I can handle myself decently now. I should probably spend a little more time out of the forest though. On day six to eight, I depleted my mine in the forest. At least I was able to find some iron ore though and craft myself a cool iron sword and an iron pickaxe. Let's just see someone try to mess with me now. But after getting attacked by the Moscow, I wanted to get away from the forest for a while. I decided to take a trip up to the mountain and enjoy that clean mountain air. And I can't burn anything down up here either. It's perfect. But suddenly, a mountain troll approached me, and it seemed like he didn't want to share the mountain with anyone. This mountain isn't big enough for the both of us, even if you are the puniest fire godzilla I've ever seen. I'm just visiting, man. You don't need to be so mean about it. How dare you call me mean? I'm gonna crush you into dust for that. He was so big, and he started chasing me. My only advantage was that I was much faster than him, so I could keep my lead. That's where my iron pickaxe came through. With my iron pickaxe, I quickly mined a big hole in the ground, then carried on running. With my trap set, I decided to taunt the mountain troll by calling him a slowpoke. He ran up to me not looking down, until he fell into the hole, and he couldn't climb back out. A uh, little help in here? I think you've earned yourself a timeout, mountain troll. On days 9 and 10, I decided to travel further up into the mountain until I found a mountain cave hidden among the rocks. Maybe there will be some treasures hidden in here. Better take a look. I walked into the cave, iron sword at the ready, using the natural light of my fire to light the way. That's when I hit the jackpot. Gold ore deposits. Yes. Now that's what I'm talking about. I started to mine the gold when suddenly, despite my fire, it started to get extremely cold inside of the cave. It sent a chill down my spine. Hello there, little creature. I turned, and that's when I saw him right there, staring at me. It was Lochnar the Necromancer. Somehow, I could feel the power coming off of him. It was time for me to even the score and use my Fire Godzilla roar. But Lochnar just laughed in response. <laughs> Be quiet, boy. Do you have any idea who you're dealing with? When my army walks the earth, every flame like yours will be snuffed out. I wasn't gonna take that sitting down. I ran at Lochnar with my iron sword and prepared to hit him. But with one strike from him, I was thrown back across the cave. Uh -oh. You're so weak. It's pathetic. You're not even worth destroying yet. Perhaps when you're a little stronger. And with a flash, Lochnar was gone and I was left terrified. 
If even my fire Godzilla roar did nothing, what hope did I have against him? But it wasn't all bad. I noticed then that I still wasn't alone in the cave. There was a fire villager waiting in there too. When Lochnar was gone, he ran towards me. I can't believe you survived. Lochnar has been going after all of the flame creatures in the land. But why? What have we ever done to him? He's a necromancer. He's trying to raise an army of the undead. And everyone knows the weakness of the undead is fire. He needs to destroy us because we're the biggest threat to him. Then you're not safe here either. You better come back to my base so we can figure out a plan to stop this. On days 11 through 14, I started expanding my base to make room for my new fire villager friend. Just like me, he was perfectly suited to a fireproof stone house. I built rooms for him and me and another room where we could hang out together. But this took a lot of stone and I soon needed to leave the base and mine more. I returned to the mine near the druid's cabin, and even though it was exhausted, it still contained some materials. While I was gathering more stone, I suddenly felt that cold feeling again. Oh no, does this mean the necromancer is behind me again? Not quite, Zozo. I'm merely one of his servants. He brought me back to life, so I will serve his every order, including destroying you! It was the Black Death, a plague doctor brought back from the dead. I drew my sword and prepared to battle, but by then, the Black Death was already on me. He hit me and took out some hearts. This guy was way more powerful than me. I ran further into the mine, hoping to find some kind of escape route, but the Black Death was gaining on me. I needed some kind of advantage. Wait, is that a chest? It was a chest. Maybe something in there can save me. I opened up the chest and found a fire aspect enchantment inside. This would give my sword flaming strikes. Perfect. I quickly used the anvil next to the chest to apply the enchantment to my sword. Take this, Black Death. Boom, that got him. The Black Death was set on fire and went running back out of the cave. Fire really does scare off the undead. Safe from the Black Death for now, I traveled back to my base and started making the wall even taller. But now, knowing just how effective fire was against the undead, I made some flaming torches to put on the wall. This should keep out any uninvited guests. On day 15, I went to check on the fire villager and make sure he was settling in nicely. I know from first-hand experience, it isn't easy to be a fire creature. I find it very comfortable in here, Zozo. Thank you. It's much nicer than having to stay in some damp old cave all day. So tell me, what's the deal with this Lochnar guy? Everyone's been telling me that he's trying to raise some kind of army of the undead. Who is he? Everything you've heard is true, but there's more. People say that Lochnar is over a thousand years old, and because he's already dead, he can't be destroyed. Centuries ago, he was defeated by a legendary hero and locked up in the swamp of vileness. But somehow, he came back again, and he's trying to finish what he started all those years ago, making an army of the undead so powerful that he'll rule the world forever. Can the legendary hero come back to defeat him? It sounds like we really need him right now. That was a long time ago, Zozo. The legendary hero is probably extremely old now, if he's even alive. No, if we want to defeat Lochnar the Necromancer, we need to find a new hero. Like who? Well, like you, Zozo. You survived an encounter with him and saved me back in the cave. No way. Have you seen me? I'm just a little fire Godzilla. The only reason I survived was because he said I was too weak to be worth destroying. I'd stand no chance against him in a real fight. Do you think I could survive a fight with Lochnar? I think I'd need to get a lot stronger first. On days 16 to 19, I started putting together a plan with the Fire Villager. If Lochnar is destroying fire creatures because he knows they're a threat to his undead army, we better gather up as many fire creatures as we can. Great idea, Zozo. If memory serves, Lochnar's undead minions were keeping a Blaze prisoner in an underground cavern near here. Then I guess I better go rescue him. After hours of searching the forest, I found a secret entrance to an underground area, sneakily hidden among some trees. Hopefully I'm not too late to help the blaze down there. I rushed through the entrance. I made my way into the insides of the underground cavern and took a look around, trying not to draw too much attention to myself. I saw a lava river running through the bottom of the cavern, so my fire wasn't too out of place here. Wait, are those wither skeletons? They were! A bunch of wither skeletons were scattered everywhere along the path leading deeper into the cavern. They must be guarding the prison cell where the blaze is. I ran in with my new fire aspect sword and started to fight them off as I went deeper and deeper into the cavern. After I took most of them, I unleashed my fire Godzilla roar. It scared some of the wither skeletons so bad, they ran off faster than their bones could shake. 
Clearly, all of this fighting was worth some pretty great XP, because I grew to almost twice my size, with almost twice the armor and twice the hearts. Maybe I can be strong enough to take on Lochnar, with the right training. But first, I broke open the prison with my iron pickaxe and freed the blaze. Thanks for getting me out of there. It was really starting to get stuffy. Don't mention it, buddy. How did you get captured? Well, I was out here searching for the Kyther of Light when I got ambushed by all those skeletons. You were looking for what? The Kyther of Light. It's the weapon that the legendary hero used to defeat Lochnar all those years ago. It's said to be the most powerful weapon against the undead in the world. Oh, wow. Then I should probably start looking for it, too. Come back to my base. I want to know more. On days 20 to 22, Blaze and I returned to the base, only to see it being attacked by a horde of zombies. Even the torches I'd added to the walls didn't seem to scare them off. Lochnar was making some really tough undead for us to face. Thankfully, with Blaze at my side, the fight didn't last long. With his flames and my fire sword, we were able to take on the zombies and send them back from once they came. So long, you undead meanies. It feels so good to be free and fighting again. Glad you're back in the groove, Blaze. But while the zombies weren't too difficult to defeat, this incident did make me realize our base needed some better defense. Or at least something to scare off potential attackers. That's when I had a great idea for the statue. The perfect thing to keep the undead away. I started working on the base of the statue with excitement. This is sure to keep the mobs at bay once it's done. Can you tell what it's gonna be? And if you want more adventures like this, subscribe to Zozo, because believe me, the best is yet to come. With Blaze here at the base, I've still got to do one more thing, add a new room for him. With me, Blaze, and the Fire Villager all together, we're a fiery force to be reckoned with. On days 23 to 26, the base came under attack worse than ever before. I woke up to find the base surrounded by mutant skeletons, who were bigger, faster, and stronger than even wither skeletons. I ran out with my fire aspect sword and started attacking them, one by one. Each mutant skeleton took several hits with the sword to down. These guys were tougher than any grunt enemy I'd faced so far. A little help here, guys? Luckily for me, Blaze and the fire villager were there to help. With the three of us working together, we were able to drive off the remaining mutant skeletons back into the woods. That'll teach you to attack our base, skellies. Oh look! One of the mutant skeletons dropped a bow. Yes. That's perfect! I needed a good long-range weapon for my arsenal. Hmm, what should I do next? Zozo! Yes, Blaze? Now we've fought off the mutant skeletons, you should start exploring the deep dark woods for the Kyther of Light. We need it to defeat Lochnor the Necromancer. Good idea, Blaze! I journeyed out into the deepest, darkest part of the forest, knowing it would be the exact kind of place where Lochnor's minions would be waiting for me. And I was right, but I wasn't the only one. There was a fire elemental being surrounded by mutant zombies. The strongest zombies yet! Lucky for me, I had my new bow. I pulled it out, keeping a distance as I fired arrows at the mutant zombies. They seemed so shocked by my surprise attack, they retreated further into the dark of the forest. I'd saved the fire elemental! Wanna come back to my base, little buddy? I'm collecting fire creatures. He seemed eager, so we headed back to the base. I built a new room to house the fire elemental, and built in a new base defense. Large holes dug into the ground around the base, so any stumbling zombies thinking of attacking would fall right in. I'm feeling safer already. On days 27 to 31, I started off by asking Blaze to tell me everything he knows about the Kyther of Light, seeing as it may be our best chance to defeat Lochnar the Necromancer. It's an ancient weapon, Zozo, supposedly created by a powerful group of sorcerers, for if there was ever a great evil they needed to strike down. The legend goes that only someone pure of heart can wield the Kyther. To a being of evil, it's useless. But how can I find it? Even the most powerful weapon in the world is only useful if it's in our hands. Hmm, perhaps the legendary hero would have hidden the Kyther in the last place the undead would think to look. The Nether. Oh no, the Nether? That's one of the most dangerous places out there. I guess if it's the only place I can find the Kyther, it's off to the Nether I go. With my sword and my bow, I set off for an old Nether portal in the woods. It's now or Nether. Yeah, bad joke, sorry. On the other side of the portal, it was all flames and lava. A fire Godzilla honestly looked kind of at home here. What didn't look at home was a huge, scary pigless running straight towards me. You must be Zozo. I guess you're here looking for the Kyther of Light. Brave kid. And I guess you're here to find the Kyther too, before I can find it. You're a smart kid too, but I've got orders direct from Lochnar. Only one of us is leaving the Nether. Let's go. I tried to draw my bow, but the Pigless was too fast for me. I was lucky enough to pull out my sword just in time to counter his attack. 
Before he knew it, I hit him back and eventually managed to hit him in a way that made him touch lava, and due to that he screamed a bit and moved away. You're tougher than you look, but I'll get you next time, you little twerp. And with that, he ran off into the depths of the nether. On days 32 to 35, I traveled deeper into the nether, leaving the wastes and entering the Crimson Forest. Wow, this place is super scary. If the legendary hero really hid the Kyther here, he must have been one tough warrior. The nether has some of the scariest mobs around, but I was surprised to see a familiar face amongst all the trees and lava. It was a baboon, just like the one I met on my first day here. Hey, aren't you the one who burned down my tree? I'm sorry, Mr. Baboon. It was an accident. I'm a fire Godzilla. Sometimes I burn stuff down. Whatever. It doesn't matter now. What are you doing in the Crimson Forest? I'm looking for the Kyther of Light to defeat Lochnar the Necromancer. Wait, you too? He attacked my family with some zombies. I heard the Kyther might be hidden in the Soul Sand Desert. Let's travel together. We have better odds. Sounds good to me, Mr. Baboon. We traveled together to the Soul Sand Desert, which was every bit as bleak and barren as the name suggests. I then noticed Lochnar the Necromancer standing on top of a floating island. Hello again, Zozo, was it? Nothing about you was particularly memorable. You're all smug now, Lochnar, but you won't be when we find the Kyther and defeat you. You won't be able to find anything when you're dead. Suddenly, the ground below me and Mr. Baboon began to shake. I drew my bow and fired at Lochnar, but he didn't even flinch. It was useless. If we couldn't escape, we'd be done for. That's when I had an idea. I turned and fired my bow at one of the gas. That should get the attention of him and his ghastly friends. With Lochnar preoccupied with the gas, Mr. Baboon and I ran away, back towards the nether portal. That was some quick thinking back there, Zozo. You really saved our skins. I couldn't have done it without you. Come back to the base with me. You can join our anti lochnar squad. And with that, we exited the nether. On days 36 to 39, I returned back to the base with the baboon. I built him a little treehouse because he didn't find the stone fortress as comfy as me and my fire creature friends. I gathered my new base mates together, the fire villager, Blaze, the fire elemental, and the baboon. I needed to hear their thoughts on my hunt for the Kyther. It wasn't in the nether waste, the crimson forest, or the soul sand desert. If the Kyther really is hidden in the nether, where could it be? You're telling me you didn't check the basalt deltas? The basalt deltas? What's that? It's the most dangerous place in the nether, Zozo. If the legendary hero really didn't want the Kyther to be found, that'd be the best place to hide it. The most dangerous place in the nether? I can't go there yet. The rest of the nether was already dangerous enough. If the Kyther was really in the basalt deltas, I needed to get stronger to get there, and I needed a little more inspiration. That's why I started working more on the statue. I must say, it's coming along quite nicely. From days 40 to 43, Blaze approached me, knowing I was feeling nervous about going back into the nether. Look, Zozo, the nether is a scary place. I know, I used to live there. But sometimes, when you can't fight your way through, you need to sneak. But Blaze, I can't sneak. I'm a fire Godzilla. I'm too easy to spot. I know, I know. But that's where my new plan comes in. There's a potion recipe hidden in a book I left in a lava canyon near here. If you can go get it for me, I'll make you a potion you'll find extremely useful. So that's exactly what I did. I found my way to the underground lava canyon. It was really hot down there, but thankfully, fire Godzillas don't mind the heat. There had to be a chest down there somewhere. If someone left a book down here on its own, it'd just burn up. But my thoughts were interrupted when suddenly, a huge serpent tried to grab me. It was a heck of a jump scare. I'm not on the menu, so slither on by, you reptile. I managed to hit it and knock it into the fiery depths below. That will teach you to mess with a fire Godzilla. As I continued to explore, I saw the chest tucked away in a corner. Let's take a look inside. A book, jackpot. I then proceeded to leave the lava canyon and make my way back to the base. I gave the book over to Blaze and he made me a potion. This right here is a potion of invisibility. Wow. It might make your journey into the basalt deltas a little less dangerous. Thanks, Blaze. This is perfect. On days 40 to 49, I made my way back to the nether portal deep in the forest. Here goes nothing. After landing in the nether, I made my way through to the basalt deltas. My friends weren't kidding when they said this place was dangerous. It looks impossible to even build here. I took the potion of invisibility and started to sneak through. There were sheer cliffs everywhere. I had to be careful so that I didn't fall. Help me, please, someone help me. Oh no, is that an illager? What's he doing in here? And why is he surrounded by endermen? I can't just leave him like that. I need to help him, even if it means wasting my invisibility. 
Still keeping my distance, I pulled out my bow. I opened fire at the Endermen, causing them to teleport away. Yes. That gave me a window to get the Illager out of there. Come with me if you want to live! Me and the Illager ran for the hills until we were out of the Basalt Delta and back in the much safer Soul Sand Valley. Thank you, kind stranger. You saved me. How can I ever repay you? You can tell me everything you know about the Kyther of Light. I need it to defeat Lochnar the Necromancer. Wait, the Kyther of Light? That reminds me of an old poem I used to hear all the time when I was a kid. Who seeks the Kyther, brave and true, venture into the forest blue? The forest blue? Wait, that sounds like the warped forest. It's the only place in the nether I haven't checked. Come with me, we'll go find it. On days 50 to 53, me and my new friend the Illager made our way into the warped forest, one of the slightly nicer parts of the nether. I might have even enjoyed it if we weren't ambushed by that pigless I fought earlier. Hey, looky here, it's that dweeb, Zozo. Name calling? Really? That's just uncalled for, man. No, Zozo, what's uncalled for is you being here. Me and the rest of Lochnar's boys have already found the Kyther, and it's far away from here. You're gonna get destroyed in the nether for nothing. That's it, you're going down, Pigless. But Pigless pulled a dirty trick. He didn't go for me, he went straight for the Illager, taking him down immediately. No, you can't do that. I can do whatever I want. Let's tango, Zozo. We clashed again, but this time I was stronger than before. I dodged his attacks easily, and with a few well-placed strikes from my fire sword, Pigless was done for. With him gone, I was all alone in the nether again. Maybe Pigless had lied about them taking the Kyther. I had to explore and find out. There was a bastion remnant, an ancient ruined fortress nearby, and it seemed like the exact kind of place the legendary hero might have hidden the Kyther. Instead, all I found was a great beast, cowering in the shadows. Is the Pigless gone? That guy dragged me along with him to help him find the Kyther. Most of the rest of our team was destroyed by nether mobs. It was horrible. It's okay, I defeated the Pigless. You said he made you work for him. Do you have any idea where they may have taken the Kyther? Uh, tough to say. I think Pigless mentioned something about taking it back to the camp. He probably meant the one in the wasteland, back outside the nether. Perfect, so at least I know where to look next. Let's get out of here. Wait, before you go, you deserve a reward for taking out that jerk Pigless. I was gonna use it myself, but here, it's a knockback enchantment. Your strikes will knock back your enemies now. Oh, finally, some good luck. From days 54 to 57, I returned to my base and started making some adjustments. I added some guard towers so that we could spot any incoming threats faster. Just as I finished repairing and adding the knockback enchantment to my iron sword, the fire villager staying in the base approached me, looking very worried. Zozo, I need a hand. I've been looking into it, and I've seen that a mutant zombie is skulking out in the forest outside. You should probably go take care of it while I'm working on an extremely important potion. This would be the perfect opportunity to try my new knockback ability. Yes. I ran out into the forest, and just as the fire villager had told me, there was a mutant zombie making its way towards our base. I needed to put a stop to it. Come on, mutant zombie, you're no match for me. And I was right. With the knockback enchantment on my fire sword, I defeated it in no time and headed back to the base. Great work, Zozo. And here's your reward. I made a potion of slow falling. When you take it, it eliminates fall damage. You never know when that'll come in handy. On days 58 to 62, I continued work on the statue. I was really pleased with how it was coming along. Can you guess what it is yet? Suddenly, I heard the baboon yell out in panic from his treehouse. Guys, something is coming towards us. I looked out and saw a mob coming towards us. Creepers, courtesy of Lochnar the Necromancer. This is bad, this is really bad. But before we could do anything, the first wave of creepers had already hit. Several of them exploded, taking out huge chunks of the defensive wall, and others started crawling through the new gaps. Uh -oh. I decided to rush in and finally get rid of the creeper menace. They started exploding again, taking out chunks of the base. By the time I managed to turn the tide of the fight, huge portions of our base had already been destroyed. When I had the advantage, the last surviving creeper ran off back into the forest. The fight was over for now. We need to start rebuilding immediately. Blaze, Fire Villager. Wait, where's Baboon? That's when we realized the Creepers had blown up Baboon's treehouse with Baboon inside of it. From days 63 to 66, hungry for fiery vengeance, I followed the last remaining Creeper back into the woods. You and your friends aren't going to get away with destroying Mr. Baboon. I chased him into the forest and saw him disappear down into an underground cavern. I was so angry, I didn't even think about how dangerous it could be to chase a creeper into an enclosed place. I hopped down into the cavern, but the creeper was nowhere to be seen. Instead, I found a book laying on the ground containing a secret note. 
invade the base and destroy them all. Any survivors must return to the camp in the desert. G-O-A-W. G-O-A-W? Who's that? Wait, the camp in the desert. That's where they must be keeping the Kyther of Light. Yes. It was only then that I looked up and saw the creeper crawling quickly towards me. No time to think. On pure instinct, I pulled out my bow and fired. Boom! The creeper exploded, taking out a portion of the cavern. Lucky for me, thanks to the quick reflexes, I was out of the blast zone. From days 67 to 70, I traveled for two days all the way out to the desert. It was a really tough journey, but by the end, I finally saw the camp. Yes. It was a cabin surrounded by campfires, with a ghostly figure floating around it. It looked like the ghost of an ancient warrior. Lochnar the Necromancer must be able to raise skeletons, zombies, and ghosts. Wait, ghost of ancient warrior? That must be G-O-A-W, the one who wrote the note. He must be a pretty big deal. As I got close, I noticed there was a gorge in the desert just outside the camp. Better not fall in. I drew my bow and fired at the ghost. But predictably, the arrow went straight through him. That's when he threw through the air and lunged at me. He didn't even talk. He was all action. I managed to dodge and strike back with my sword, but he parried. This guy was a better fighter than anyone I'd ever faced. I didn't even know if I could defeat him. That's when I had an idea. If I'm not strong enough to beat him yet, I can still trick him. Before he could attack me again, I quickly drank my potion of slow falling. Then, when he attacked me again, I jumped back and fell into the gorge. To him, it looked like I fell to my doom, but thanks to the potion, I was just fine. When the ghost finally floated away, I climbed back up to the top. Kyther of Light, here I come! On days 71 to 74, I was finally able to make my way into the cabin being guarded by the ghost of the ancient warrior. Except, the Kyther wasn't there. The cabin was empty. All I heard was the echoing laughter of Lochnar the Necromancer. He was always a few steps ahead. Once again, it all been for nothing. I made the long trek back to my damaged base, empty-handed. On days 75 to 78, I came back to the base and noticed how damaged it really was. It was still heavily damaged from the creeper assault, and I needed to start the repairs immediately, so I did just that. I felt terrible knowing that now Mr. Baboon is gone, I didn't need to rebuild the treehouse. As I finished up the repairs, the fire villager approached me. Hey Zozo, I just wanted to say I'm sorry you didn't find the Kyther, but I know you're strong enough to beat Lochnar anyway. I figured this might help. That's when he handed me a diamond sword with fire aspect, the strongest weapon I'd ever had my hands on. Wow, thanks fire villager! It may not be the Kyther of Light, but it's the next best thing. And it turns out that the diamond sword couldn't have come at a better time, because suddenly, the ghost of the ancient warrior had returned, and he was flying at me. Guess it's time for a rematch. But this time, I didn't need any cheap tricks to take him down. Using my new diamond sword, I dodged his blows and struck him again and again, until he burst into ghost vapor and disappeared. I immediately started growing larger and larger, as well as doubling my hearts. But it wasn't just that. With my new size, I gained Godzilla strength, making all my close range attacks three times as powerful. Just then, the fire villager ran up to me. You did it, Zozo. You defeated the ghost of the ancient warrior. That's amazing. Wait, Zozo, I found this where the ghost vaporized. It looks like a notebook. The latest note read, Lochnar is nearly at his full power. The final arrangements are being put into place. Destroy Zozo and the Druid. Wait, the Druid from the cabin? He's involved in this too? On day 79 to 84, I knocked on the door of the druid's cabin to find out how he was involved in all of this. Just like when I first met him, he wasn't eager to have me as a visitor. Keep your distance, Fire Godzilla. You're even bigger than last time, and my house is very flammable. I don't want to burn your house down, druid, but I know someone who does. I've seen instructions from Lochnar the Necromancer. He wants to destroy me and you. What does he have against you? Ugh, Lochnar again? I thought I was done with that guy. What do you mean? I defeated him a few hundred years ago and sealed him away. I figured he'd stay gone for good, but I guess not. Wait, does that mean you're the legendary hero? I was, sure, but then I retired to become a druid. It's a much easier life. And besides, you should be fine. As long as you have the Kaithar, he won't be that hard to defeat. But he has the Kaithar. Oh, oh, okay. This could be bad. After our conversation, the druid led me back out into the forest to find another nether portal. He'd hid another weapon in the nether all those years ago as backup, if ever the Kyther fell into the wrong hands. But when we arrived at the side of the portal, it had already been destroyed. This isn't good. If Lochnar destroyed the nether portal, it means he doesn't need it anymore. He's reaching the full height of his powers. What do we do now? Well, from where I'm standing, 
The only option is to... An arrow shot out of the woods, hitting the druid and destroying him before he could even finish his sentence. No, this can't be happening! I turned to see a small gang of skeletons emerge out of the thicket behind us. As they ran at me, I made short work of them with my diamond fire sword. But now, I was out of options and out of time. There was only one thing left to do. I need to find the Swamp of Vileness and destroy Lochnar myself. On days 85 to 89, I made my way out to the snowy landscapes of the north, where I finally found the great beast I'd met back in the nether. As far as I could tell, he would be the only one who could tell me where to find the Swamp of Vileness and finally track down Lochnar the Necromancer himself. I know where to find it, but it won't be easy. It's beyond the forest, but you can only go at night. And that's the thing, that creep is strongest at night. So if you're going to take him on, you better be well defended. That's a useful tip. Thanks, Great Beast. From days 90 to 94, I decided to take the Great Beast's advice and armor up. I used my iron pickaxe to mine some diamonds and turned them into a full set of diamond armor, helmet, chestplate, leggings, and boots. But I didn't want to stop there. I needed some enchantments to really make sure I could take a punch from Lochnar and his evil army of the undead. I gave myself the protection enchantment. That makes my armor twice as durable against close range attacks and projectile protection, which kept me safe from ranged attacks. Let's see Lochnar take me on now. From days 95 to 97, I finally finished the statue. Its flame could be seen from miles away and should keep all the bad mobs away from my base once and for all. It was a beacon of hope for all fire mobs, a bright, brilliant beacon that could be seen from miles away. And that's when I realized why I had to take on Lochnar and his undead minions. I could either use my fire powers to destroy, like when I accidentally burned down Mr. Baboon's tree, or I could use it to be a beacon of hope to fight back against evil whenever I can, because it's the right thing to do. So it's exactly what I was going to do. On day 98, I spoke to the fire villager in Blaze about my plan to attack the Swamp of Vileness and finally take down Lochnar. You can't do this alone, Zozo. You're strong, but Lochnar is so powerful, and he has an entire army. He's right, Zozo. Why don't you let us come with you? Surely we'll be stronger together. I can't put you at risk like that. You need to stay here as backup in case Lochnar defeats me and his undead army escapes. But I can't let that happen. Trust me, no matter what, I'm going to defeat Lochnar and put an end to his evil reign of terror. With that, I exited the base, but was suddenly stopped by someone I haven't met before. Uh, can I help you? He said nothing and dropped me a note and left. The note said, if you want to help me defeat Lochnar, you should subscribe to Zozo and check out our other adventures. You can even suggest what you want to see next down in the comments. Hmm, all right. I'm sure with the help of you guys, I'll actually manage to defeat Lochnar. On day 99, following the instructions of the Great Beast, I made my way to the Swamp of Vileness in the dead of night. It was every bit as creepy as I'd imagined. Mist hung low, the mossy skeletons, minions of Lochnar, were patrolling back and forth. I didn't have any more potions of invisibility, I needed to fight my way through. Okay, skellies, come get me, I want to speak to your manager. That got their attention. Suddenly, waves of mossy skeletons started running at me, while others fired bows at me from a distance. Thankfully, with my enchanted diamond armor, I could deflect most of the damage, and my enchanted diamond sword could destroy them in one strike each. But that wasn't the problem. The mossy skeletons may have been weak, but every single time I defeated them, more just kept coming out of the fog. Don't you guys know when to quit? They are the least of your worries, Sozo. It was Lochnar. I could hear his voice, but I couldn't see him. It was like he was everywhere around me. If you survive this onslaught, come a little further and meet me in my crypt. It'll be the last thing you ever do. I wasn't going to let him get away with that. No matter how many skeletons he threw at me, I'd keep fighting to the very end. With my sword at the ready and my flames brighter than ever, I moved in towards the crypt of Lochnar. On day 100, I fought through the mossy skeletons and reached the crypt, which looked like a big, rickety pile of ancient stone. But there were stronger enemies waiting for me there. Mutant skeletons and mutant zombies came running at me, but my sword was ready. I hit them again and again, sending one after another down. But just like the mossy skeletons, more of them kept coming. I'm really starting to get sick of you guys. I unleashed a mighty Fire Godzilla roar that could be heard across all of the Swamp of Vileness and it knocked out all of the undead at once. It was just me in the crypt, so I pulled out my iron pickaxe and started destroying it, just to spite Lochnar. But just then, I fell down deeper into the crypt. Oh my gosh, there it is! That's the Kyther of Light! This is where he's been keeping it! I grabbed the Kyther. Now, I was ready to take on Lochnar! 
I wouldn't be so confident, Zozo. Boom! Lochnar appeared behind me, more powerful than he'd ever been before. Uh -oh. Do you really think you can beat this? Lochnar began to grow as his power increased, becoming a huge, monstrous super necromancer. Like this, he really did look like he could take over the world. But I wasn't done yet. And do you really think you can beat this? I summoned up all of my power and channeled it. My flames got brighter as I grew, taking in the power of the Kyther of Light. I became Ultra Fire Godzilla, with 30 hearts and almost unbreakable armor. You can't do this. It isn't fair. Life isn't fair, Lochnar. Let's go. Lochnar threw everything at me, hitting me again and again, but getting nothing. Now it's my turn. With one mighty swing of the Kyther, with all my power behind it, Lochnar was destroyed once and for all, never to raise another undead minion again. Safe at last, I returned to the base to celebrate with the Fire Villager and Blaze. Things were finally looking up for all of us. On day one, I spawned into the Badlands as a slippery, fiery fire eel! I'm one spicy Unagi, but I wouldn't be very filling. I'm only a baby eel, but I'm sure I could still pack a fiery punch! I breathed a jet of fire, one of my awesome fire eel starter powers! I was feeling super confident about what the next 100 days could hold! But my confidence didn't last for long, because a huge dread beast came running across the Badlands towards me! There was no way he was up to anything good! Still, I tried my best to be polite! Hey there, dread beast! I'm Zozo! It's nice to meet you! What a lovely day we're having, right? Yes, a lovely day! Even lovelier now that I've found you, a delicious fire eel! Wait, what? What do you mean, delicious? I am the all-devouring dread beast, Zozo. All that matters to me is finding and eating tasty things, because I'm always hungry. Oh no. And don't even think about slithering away, little eel. I love fast food. But I slithered away anyway, going as fast as I could. There was no way I was going to be devoured by a dread beast on my very first day in the overworld. But I don't think that nasty dread beast is gonna quit either. I need to get strong enough to beat that monster, or I worry I'm gonna spend a hundred days preparing to become its lunch. On day two, I kept slithering until I finally found a place in the Badlands to stop and catch my breath. It's not exactly the most hospitable place to spawn. Then again, given that I'm a fire eel, it's probably better than spawning somewhere cold. And hey, at least I have 10 hearts. I realized that all that talk about eating me had, weirdly, made me kind of hungry. These will make for a perfect snack. I busted down the tree and started eating those delicious crunchy apples, feeling my hunger bar replenish. That's when I felt something that a fire eel should never want to feel, the cold. I turned and saw that it was because a ghost was floating right behind me. Give in, Zozo. To be devoured by the mighty dread beast is your destiny. What? You don't even have anything to do with that. You're just some random ghost. Why would you want the dread beast to eat me? <laughs> You're so foolish, Zozo. I have everything to do with it. I was a villager once, and then the dread beast ate me. I came back as a ghost, forever enslaved to his will. That's terrifying. I'm sorry, Mr. Ghost, but there's no way I'm letting that happen to me. I turned and ran for my life in the opposite direction. That spooky ghost and his master slash eater had already freaked me out enough for one day. When I came to a stop, alone in the middle of the Badlands, I was exhausted and honestly felt like crying. That's when I was approached by a surprisingly friendly Gorgon. Hey little buddy, you look sad. I'm Grace, Grace the Gorgon. Why don't you come with me? I can help you out. That, that sounds nice. Thank you, I've had a really hard day. Oh, don't I know it. Come with me. I'll take you to a friend of mine's place. You'll be safe there. On day three, Grace the Gorgon and I traveled through the Badlands until we found a small shack with a troll waiting outside. But rather than posting mean comments on the internet, he seemed happy to see us. Grace the Gorgon hung back while I approached to get acquainted with the cheerful troll. The name's Terry. Terry the Troll. You look like you've seen a ghost, fella. I have seen a ghost, actually. And it was the ghost of one of the past victims of a giant monster that wants to eat me. 
Whoa, that's heavy, man. A monster wants to eat you. That sounds like something the Dread Beast would do. Yes, the Dread Beast. That's the one. Is there anything I could do to stop that awful monster from eating me? Isn't it obvious? You're gonna need to slay it. Get it before it gets you. You get me? Slay the Dread Beast? That doesn't sound like it's gonna be easy. Sure, it won't be easy, but is anything worth doing ever easy? Get out there, make a base, get some allies who will work with you. It'll be tough, and it'll take time, but the way I see it, little fire eel, it's the only way you're gonna get out of this. Well, an eel's gotta do what an eel's gotta do. Thanks for the advice, Terry. I'm gonna try my best to get strong enough and make enough allies to defeat the Dread Beast. From day four to day five, Grace the Gorgon and I went deeper into the Badlands until we found an area that looked like it'd be perfect for building a base. But you're gonna need some tools first, Zozo. Maybe start out by gathering some wood. Good idea, Grace. I used what little baby eel strength I had to break down a tree and collect the wood for building a wooden pickaxe. It's mining time. And then I mined into the ground, collecting enough stone to build myself a stone pickaxe and a stone sword. But I didn't stop there. I continued gathering stone until I had enough to build myself a basic base with two rooms. One for me and one for Grace the Gorgon. These rooms both look awesome, Zozo. Thank you. It wasn't easy to build them, but I'm glad I did. Out of curiosity, Grace, why did you choose to stay with me? Because I hate bullies and I wasn't going to leave you out there, vulnerable to the Dread Beast. We'll stick together and win this thing! Oh, you're the best, Grace! And that moment was so heartwarming, my hearts grew twice as big. Literally, I was bigger, stronger, had 20 hearts, and I gained an awesome new ability! Shooting flaming wither skulls! Ah, yeah, that's more like it! From day 6 to day 8, I ventured out to a new location, the Basalt Barrera. It's nice to take a load off and see new places. It takes my mind off the fact that a terrifying monster wants to eat me alive. Oh no, now I'm thinking about it again! But I didn't have any more time to stand around feeling anxious because the same ghost that was hassling me earlier emerged out of the trees! Zozo, I found you! I really wish you'd unfind me! You still have your sense of humor! Good, you'll need that when you're a ghost! The days are dark and the nights are long! It will never end! Actually, it's gonna end for you right now! I was sick of being chased away by monsters, so I unleashed my fire breath onto the ghost, weakening him and making him physical before finishing him off with my stone sword! Nobody's eating me! I won't allow it! My battle with the ghost must have caught the attention of a cyclops who was wandering through the basalt barrera. He immediately approached me with an offer. A uh, name Sid, Sid the Cyclops. I may not have great depth perception, but I can see a real strength in you. Think you can do a job for me? I got a local freaky customer who needs attendant to. Sure, I'll give it the old fire eel try. From day 9 to day 10, I went out to a remote part of the Basalt Barrera with Sid the Cyclops following close behind. Who exactly do you want me to fight here, Sid? Believe me, when you see him, you'll know. And Sid was right. The second I saw him, I did know. It was a huge, frightening dread night. I could see why Sid didn't want to take him on himself. Well, here goes nothing. I ran in and faced the dread knight alone. Doth thou wish to challenge me, knave? Oh yeah, consider yourself challenged. Tis a battle then. I fought the Dread Knight, but none of my attacks seemed to do any damage. The fight seemed hopeless, and in the end, all I could do was turn and run. I met back up with Sid the Cyclops, not far from the side of the battle. I'm not strong enough to take on this Dread Knight yet, Sid. But until I am, how about you come and hang out at my base? Just sounds like a guess. Let's go. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to my base with Sid the Cyclops. I got to work on building him a new room right alongside the rooms I'd built for myself and Grace. By the time I was done, Sid looked delighted. I've always wanted a second home. This is a big deal for me. I feel like a celebrity or something. I'm glad you like it, Sid. Be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. Well, it's not quite as humble now. Go take a look at some upgrades I created while you were building my bedroom. I took a look at the upgrades, and I was extremely impressed. He'd built a furnace, which would allow me to smelt ores into ingots for building weapons and armor. And he'd also built a storage room, where I could store more weapons and resources. Speaking of resources, I'm hungry. I should probably find a way to keep my food supply sustainable. 
To that end, I started herding some chickens from the surrounding badlands and created a small farm with some coops to keep them for eggs and chicken. And now, it's time to put that furnace to good use. I searched until I found a deep cave, and inside, it didn't take me long to find a nice vein of iron ore. I mined it with my stone pickaxe until I had enough to take back. I returned to my base and smelted the ore into iron ingots. With the help of a few leftover sticks, I made myself an iron sword and an iron pickaxe. This will give me something to put in the storage room too! From day 13 to day 15, I started feeling antsy, thinking about the fact that the Dread Beast was out there, biding its time, waiting for the right moment to strike. I realized that I needed to get stronger, so I returned to Grace the Gorgon for some advice on what I should do next. One of the biggest sources of the Dread Beast's power is the Legion of Ghosts created from his former meals. The more of them you can free from their bounds on the overworld, the weaker he'll be. I actually think there's another one near here at the Basalt Barrera. Because Grace always seemed to be right, I ventured out to the Basalt Barrera, and exactly as she'd predicted, there was one of the Dread Beast's ghostly servants waiting for me. Looks like I have my work cut out for me here. Through a mix of my fire attacks and the work of my strong new iron sword, I was able to defeat the ghost. It even dropped a potion of strength on the ground, which I picked up and drank. Wait, I can feel something happening. Suddenly, I started to grow, getting bigger and feeling my number of hearts grow to 30. I also experienced additional damage on every single one of my attacks. Grace was right, I'm much stronger already. This really was the trip out here. From day 16 to day 19, I went out to the bayou as a test of my courage. It was dangerous to wander around there with so much water everywhere. Still, what's life without a little risk here and there? I can't be a truly powerful fire eel if I'm not brave. But this journey was more valuable than just building up my confidence. While I was slithering along, I discovered a strange old book of fairy tales and decided to give it a read. Man's hunger for wealth and power once unlocked darker and deeper hungers. Greedy miners who wanted diamonds and gold dug deeper than they should and uncovered the monstrous dread beast, a creature with a hunger to devour the whole world. Wow, so that's where the dread beast came from. I wonder what I can do with this information. But I didn't have time to ponder on this for too long because I looked up and saw another eerie ghost floating toward me out of the darkness of the bayou. You can't escape, Zozo. I thought I could escape. <laughs> I was so silly. He ate me like he ate all the others. He'll eat you too, Zozo. He'll eat you too. I vaporized the ghost with a wither skull and then ran out of there. I didn't feel like spending any more time in the bayou that day. From day 20 to day 22, I went back into the mining cave to collect a little more iron ore before returning to my base and smelting it into iron ingots. I've got some cool weapons and tools, now it's time to get myself some awesome armor. I made an iron chest plate, which admittedly, you couldn't actually see on my fire eel body, but would provide me some valuable defensive abilities anyway. I'm stronger than I've ever been, but now it's time to use that strength for good. There's an old score I have to settle. I returned again to the Basalt Pereira with one thing on my mind, finally defeating the Dread Knight. When I found him again, I pulled out my sword and squared up to him. Doth thou return to fight me, you sad little fire ill? You cannot destroy that which has already been destroyed. What does that even mean? Once upon a time, I was a knight, a brave and powerful knight. I battled many a monster and believed that I could also slay the Dread Beast. But I was wrong, terribly, terribly wrong. The Dread Beast devoured me, and now my soul is bound to his. I'm a shade of my former self. And let me free you from this terrible state, Dread Knight. I fired a Wither Skull at the Dread Knight, then ran in to battle him directly. With my new skills and my iron sword, I was able to hold my own against the Dread Knight and eventually destroy him. Rest well, Tragic Knight. I'll avenge you and all the others. Oh, will you now? I turned with horror to see the Dread Beast itself standing close behind me. Even with my new strength, he still looked just as frightening. Tasty, tasty little eel. It's almost time, Zozo. I'm getting so hungry I can barely control myself. I didn't want to stick around and see if the Dread Beast could keep a leash on his appetite. Instead, I just turned and ran away as quickly as I could. 
From day 23 to day 26, I returned to my base to tell Sid the Cyclops that I had managed to defeat the Dread Knight and free him from his torment in the process. Zolzo, how did the go go, my guy? The Dread Knight won't be bothering you anymore. I don't feel much like celebrating about it, though. He was just as much a victim of the Dread Beast as me. He's really, really evil. Evil is as evil does, I guess. What can we do about it? We can help each other. We can fight back. I like where your head's at, kid. But where do we start? I should probably upgrade my gear. If I want to do that, I'd better get mining. I headed down into the mining cave to see what I could find. I managed to gather some iron ingots, and I took them back to my base and smelted them, making an iron helmet. I feel tougher already. Then Grace the Gorgon approached me. I heard what you did for the Dread Knight. That was an amazing start. As a thank you for your hard work, I've added an improvement to the base that I believe you'll approve of. It's a security bunker, a safe place to retreat to in the event of an ambush by the Dread Beast or one of his ghostly army. Awesome, thank you! From day 27 to day 31, I went back out to the bayou, equipped with my new helmet and a renewed sense of purpose. I was a little worried I would run into another ghost, but instead, a big friendly panda came ambling up to me. I heard you're the guy who got rid of that ghost who was terrorizing us out in these parts. Thank you kindly for that. Of course! Are there any more ghosts out here? None that I've seen, but if you're offering help, I sure could use a place to stay. See, that nasty ghost critter tore my house right up. Any chance you've got a spare room? And that room is panda-sized? Sure! Well, I don't have a room for you yet, but I can build one. Let's go back to my base, and we'll get you settled in. Thanks! By the way, my name's Patrick. I'm Zozo. You sure are impressive for an eel, Zozo. Well, that's kind of reductive, but thanks anyway. Come on! Patrick the Panda followed me back to my base, and I got to work on building him a room where he could stay. When I was finished, Grace the Gorian came to talk to me. Sozo, Terry the Troll needs help! There's a ghost attacking his home! But I can't fight it alone! Will you come with me and help? Of course, poor Terry! Let's head on over there right now! From day 32 to day 35, Grace the Gorgon and I traveled to the Badlands to help Terry the Troll. When we got there, Terry's shack was a mess. And I don't mean he forgot to pick up his dirty socks. I mean the whole thing had been knocked down. And Terry was nowhere to be seen. Instead, there was just a creepy ghost hovering out front. You're too late, Zozo. Your friend has already left this life behind. Pity he died this way and not in the jaws of the mighty Dread Beast. He was not as lucky as you will be. What do you mean? That can't be true. Ah. Uh. But it is. One way or another, you will join us. I have heard that the Dread Beast is craving eel pie, and his hunger will soon be sated. No, it won't. You may have taken my friend, but I'll never let you beat me. I shot a wither skull at the ghost and vaporized it. It felt good, but I was still heartbroken about Terry. We can't let Terry's death be in vain, Zozo. I may only be a little fire eel, but as long as I have fire breath in my body, I won't let the dread beast do this to anyone ever again. From day 36 to day 39, I returned to the Basalt Barrera. Now that I got rid of the Dread Knight, this place is pretty peaceful. I'd love to kick back and relax out here. Well, not kick. I don't have feet, but you get the idea. I was just about to try and squeeze in a little relaxation between quests when another ogre approached me. Oi, your name's Zozo, isn't it? I've got a right awful bloke in me house. He just won't leave. I tried to chase him out, and he said he'd burn me to a crisp he did. Wow, people from the nether sure have a funny way of talking. But I get what you mean, friend. Show me the way, and I'll do my best to help. He took me to his house, where, sure enough, a great big fire ogre was getting ready to burn the place down. Luckily, I threw a wither skull and stopped him before he could torch the nether ogre's house. Here you go. Still just as not burned down as it was before. Well, Bob's your uncle. Say, you're that bloke what's looking to get rid of the dread beast. I am. Well, he's only out there in the swamplands he is. That's good to know. I just won't go there until I'm strong enough to fight and win. From day 40 to day 43, I traveled back home to my base. When I got there, I was surprised to find Sid the Cyclops waiting for me. Hey there, Zozo! While you are out, I built some additional rooms. Oh, that's amazing! I need a room for my friend here. But what made you think of that? Well, I was hoping we could invite more guests to come stay. I know a few guys. It turns out that very guy was Patrick the Panda, who I'd already met. The more the merrier. Here's your new room, Patrick. 
Holly, it's perfect, Zozo. Say, could you do me one more favor? Could you go to the bayou and get my favorite book? I left it out there, and I've got a hankering for reading. Sure, I'll head over there now. From day 44 to day 49, I traveled to the bayou to look for Patrick the Panda's favorite book. I probably should have asked him what it looked like, or what it was called. Oh well, I'm here now. But I wasn't the only one here. The terrifying dread beast popped out right in front of me. Indeed you are, Zozo. Tasty eel, it's almost my supper time. Once it is, I will feast. And the prophecy foretells that once I eat a fire eel, I will reach my ultimate power and devour all that I see. I'll never let you eat me, especially not after you said all that scary stuff. When the time comes, you will not be able to escape. With that, he disappeared, but I didn't get a chance to wonder where he went. In his place, he left behind a huge, mean-looking blue manticore. Look upon your future, Zozo. If I could not defeat the Dread Beast, then surely a tiny, insignificant fire eel will not be able to. You will be devoured like the rest. Why still work for him after what he did to you? Ooh, there is no choice. Once the Dread Beast has eaten you, there is no freedom. That's terrible. I could tell he was the toughest opponent I'd faced so far. But if I wanted to save myself and free the blue manticore from the Dread Beast grip, I was going to have to win. From day 50 to day 53, I continued my fight against the blue manticore. He was even stronger than he looked. I was pretty worried that I might not make it out of this one. Just accept your fate. Never. No one deserves that. I used all of the strength I had and fought as hard as I could. And with the help of my trusty Wither Skull, I finally managed to defeat him. But by the time I did, the Dread Beast was long gone. Oh, I was hoping to find out where exactly his base is. I know it's in a swamp, but where? Just then, I noticed something on the ground. The Manticore must have dropped it. I took a closer look, and it was a map with Dread Beast Clubhouse written on it. This must be where his base is. Once I'm strong enough, I'm going straight there. From day 54 to day 57, I continued my search for Patrick the Panda's book. Finally, I came across a book lying on the ground. I went over to pick it up, but a hell ostrich leapt at me and started attacking. Hey, that's my friend's book. I need it back. The hell ostrich didn't say anything. It just kept attacking me. Okay, we don't have to chat about it, but you just have to let me take the book. With a few well-timed attacks, I was able to defeat the hell ostrich and grab the book. Sure enough, it said Panda's book on it. It also dropped something else. Netherite ingots. Maybe I can use these later. I hurried back to my base to find Patrick the Panda. Patrick, I got your book. Thank you, Zozo. I reckon I'll never know how to repay you. You can pay me back with your friendship and by enjoying that book. I also happen to have heard tell of a magic apple, one that gives anyone who eats it a massive boost of strength. Might be just what you need. I'll keep an eye out for a magic apple then. From day 58 to day 62, I took a look around my base. This place is pretty great, but it could be even better. I wandered over to the chicken farm and had an idea. That's it, I'll expand this area so we can have even more chickens. With all of these new people staying at the base, we'll need lots of eggs. After that, I headed back into the mining cave to look for anything I could use to upgrade my gear. It took a long time, but I managed to find some diamonds. I took them back to my base and used them to craft a set of diamond armor, a diamond pickaxe, and a diamond sword. Wait until the Dread Beast gets a look at this. Good luck eating all these diamonds. Grace the Gorgon then approached with some more good news. Zozo, come and see what I've done. I've added to the base. This is the party room, where we can all celebrate when you've bested the beast. I know you can do it. Thanks for believing in me, Grace. From day 63 to day 66, I was hanging out at my base, practicing my dance moves in the party room when Sid the Cyclops came to see me. Zozo, I heard that there might be some helpful materials in Butch Forest. Where'd you hear that? Got a tip from my materials guy. It's good enough for your guy, it's good enough for me. I traveled to the birch forest and got to work looking for anything useful. As I searched, I spotted a maned wolf stalking her way toward me. Please don't attack me, I'm busy. I wasn't gonna attack you. I was gonna say hi and ask you for a favor if that's okay. I'm Mallory. Nice to meet you, I'm Zozo. What kind of favor? 
My baby was kidnapped by a silver skeleton. Please help me get him back. Of course. Where did you last see him? Let's go. From day 67 to day 70, I followed the maned wolf to another part of the birch forest. There, I could see a silver skeleton. Where are you hiding the baby maned wolf? I'll never tell. She's definitely not locked in that building over there. Huh, I tricked you. Time to fight. I didn't give the silver skeleton any more time. I shot a wither skull at the skeleton. He attacked me in return, but my armor kept me from taking too much damage. Then it was time to test out my new diamond sword. I was able to defeat the silver skeleton with only two swipes. Then I opened the door to the nearby totally not suspicious building, and there was the baby wolf. Thank you so much. I'll change her name to Zozo after you. That's really nice, but please don't do that. A thanks is enough. From day 71 to day 74, I decided to follow the map to the cold swamplands and try to sneak a look at that dread beast hideout. While I was following the map's path, I started thinking about how much had already happened. I've had some amazing adventures so far. To find even more of my awesome antics, make sure to search Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O. That's my name. Finally, I reached the cold swamplands. Jeez, they call it cold for a reason. This is definitely no place for a fire eel. Then, in swooped the Dread Beast. You will have plenty of time to get used to it after I've had my meal and your spirit is trapped here forever. The Dread Beast found me before I found him. Time to see if I'm ready to fight this guy. I shot a wither skull at him, but he tanked it with complete ease. I'll try the sword. I attacked with my sword, but he barely seemed to feel it. Like a mere paper cut. Uh-oh, he hit me back, and my new armor protected me from getting completely knocked down, but I knew I wouldn't last too much longer. I'm not ready to take him on. From day 75 to day 78, I ran all the way back to my base. I wish I could fight him now, but if I do that before I get stronger, I'll lose for sure. I decided to lie down in my room for a while. I want to be a hero, but I'm starting to think that, sadly, I'm only an eel. Grace the Gorgon knocked on my door, interrupting my sad thoughts. Hey Zozo, I know you're disappointed, but I wanted to show you an addition I've made to our home here. Come and look. I followed her all the way to a new watchtower. Oh, this is pretty cool. Thank you, Grace. I feel better. Well, Grace and I were admiring the watchtower and all the watching we'd be able to do up there, Patrick joined me. Take a look at what I found. He handed me a magic apple. Hey, this is like the one you told me about. Not just like it, it's the same one. Try it. I ate the apple and I felt myself growing bigger and more powerful. My heart's increased to 60 and I gained a new attack. I could shoot a fireball. I'll show that dread beast what being a fire eel is all about. From day 79 to day 84, I traveled back to the cold swamplands. This time, if the dread beast ambushes me again, I'll be ready. I didn't spot him anywhere, but I was able to test out my new strength and my fireball on an undead scorpion that tried to sting me. Nice try, but I'm not a little fire eel that people can pick on anymore. I'm a big, strong eel that plays by my own rules. That awesome act of firepower attracted the attention of a friendly polar bear. You sure are. I know what that's like. Well, not the being an eel pot. As you can see, I'm a polar bear. Hi. I decided to sit with the polar bear for a little while, and when I finally got up to go, he stopped me for a second. Thanks for the company. Hey, is that netherite? Attach it to your sword, like this. Then he crafted a netherite sword for me. Thank you, this is great! From day 85 to day 89, I said goodbye to the nice polar bear and took my new netherite sword back to my base. When I got there, I saw that someone had destroyed my new watchtower. Hey, Grace worked really hard on that. I looked around for the culprit, and I saw a ghost floating away into the Badlands. Oh, no you don't. I chased after the ghost as fast as I could. As I did, a painted kitty stopped me. Excuse me? Could you point the way to the birch forest? I'm terribly lost. I quickly pointed her in the right direction, then kept running after the ghost. Looks like he's running toward the cold swamplands. From day 90 to day 94, I finally managed to catch up with the ghost. He ran into the Dread Beast's hideout. I stopped just outside. I'm not ready to go in there yet, but I can wait out here and see what happens. The ghost came back out of the hideout like he was looking for me. I got a better look at him and saw that he wasn't just a ghost. He was a huge, tough-looking Dread Ghoul. My, my, my. Look who took the bait. 
It's the main course for the coming feast. I'm so sick of you all saying stuff like that. Then try and stop me, if you dare. I shot a fireball at the Dread Ghoul, and it barely even phased him. Uh-oh, he's the toughest minion I've fought yet. From day 95 to day 97, I continued my battle against the Dread Ghoul. I really need to do my best if I'm gonna win this one. With the help of my new netherite sword, I was finally able to knock the Dread Ghoul down for good. His helmet fell to the floor, and I grabbed it. It was netherite. This goes great with my sword. Hey, what's this? I spotted a note on the ground. It says the Dread Beast is getting worried about me. He thinks I might be able to destroy him before he can eat me and fulfill the prophecy. This is great news. It means I'm definitely on the right track. I can't back down. I've got to get everything I possibly need before I enter the final battle. On day 98, I return to my base. Grace the Gorgon and the rest were waiting for me. I'm really starting to think I can do this. I wasn't so sure before, but now I know everything will work out. It will. And look, I fixed the watchtower. The Dread Beast and his ilk can't keep us down. Yeah! Next, I spoke to Patrick the Panda. Zozo, before you head on out of here to fight that big boss, take this. It's a potion of strength. It'll power you up good. Thank you. This is just what I need. And finally, Sid the Cyclops. I don't have any potions or any repairs done. Just this. I may only have one eye, but I can see a bright future ahead of you. And the rest of us, too. Because you're gonna do it, kid. Thank you. Well, no more waiting around. I've got to go see a dread beast about a battle. On day 99, I traveled back to the cold swamplands and the Dread Beast hideout. When I got there, I started to get pretty worried because the whole place was crawling with ghosts. Well, they were floating, but they were everywhere. But the maned wolf from before came bounding up to me. I can handle these ghosts. You get inside while I keep them busy. While the maned wolf took care of the ghost, I finally entered the Dread Beast clubhouse. On day 100, I entered the Dread Beast base and found him waiting there for me. Yes, I knew you'd be here soon. My stomach has been growling. Time to feast. Why do you have to eat all these innocent victims? Why can't you just have some pie or a sandwich like everybody else? Because no sandwich in this world tastes sweeter than absolute power. What about pie? Pie's pretty sweet. Enough talk. I'm much too hungry, and I'm craving Fire Eel. He lunged at me and attacked, but I was ready. I dodged him and shot back a fireball in return. It hit him, but he kept going. He rushed at me again, and this time he knocked me back. But I wasn't done yet. I used my netherite sword to get the upper hand. Zozo, imagine it. If you join my ghostly army, then you will share in my infinite power. The world will be ours. No thanks, I'm not taking that deal. I drank the strength potion and finally got the better of him. And with one more swipe of my sword, I destroyed the mighty, terrible Dread Beast. I did it, I saved the day. I'll say it, this eel is on fire. On day one, I spawned into the Sika Woods as an adorable little fire rabbit. I may just be a wascally wabbit, but if you mess with me, that doesn't mean you won't get burned. I decided to hop through the woods and explore, hoping I wouldn't accidentally set anything on fire with my burning bunny body. At least I know I'll never get cold. I wanted to stay optimistic, but it got a lot harder when a big, scary bug came crawling out of the forest behind me. It was a Mermex soldier. Halt, by order of Her Majesty, the Mermex Queen. What is your business here? Don't worry, sir. I, I was just looking around. I spawned nearby. I can just leave if you want. Not so fast. We've been told to keep a lookout for suspicious rabbits. And you're both suspicious and a rabbit. Come with me. But what if I don't want to come with you? Then I'll just have to take you by force. I didn't like the idea of being taken by force, so I turned and hopped away as quickly as I could. I may have not had any weapons, but at least I was extremely fast. I'm just a baby fire rabbit for now with only 10 hearts. But if I can get away from these creepy crawlies, I'll be able to get bigger and stronger. But my little self pep talk was interrupted by another Mermex soldier popping out from behind a tree and stopping me in my tracks. Don't you know it's rabbit season, silly bunny? Us Mermex soldiers are everywhere in the Seco woods. You better come with me or someone somewhere is going to enjoy a bowl of rabbit soup tonight. 
That was clearly a threat, so I decided to play along and follow him so I could save my fire rabbit skin. On day two, the Mermex soldier pushed me all the way to a weird, bee-like looking hive base on the edge of the woods. Not the kind of place where I'd typically like to spend my day. What is this place? This is the hive, you misbehaving little rabbit. This is where me and my fellow Mermexes live with our wonderful queen. She's currently in a different biome on royal business, but when she returns, she'll question you personally. How long will that take though? It will take as long as it takes. Do not question the judgment of our beloved queen. He didn't talk to me much after that. I was taken to some kind of holding cell on the hive and pushed inside to wait for the return of the queen. But she could be gone for weeks. I don't want to be trapped in here for all that time. You're telling me. I turned and saw a pink pixie fluttering around the cell looking bored. I'm Paris, the pink pixie. I feel like I've been trapped in here forever. I was just flying through the Seco woods minding my own business when those Mermex goons grabbed me and dragged me in here for being suspicious. Sorry for making assumptions here, but can't you use your pink pixie magic to get us out of here? Nope, these walls are magic proof. Hmm, but are they fireproof? I walked closer to the wooden fence gates until they caught fire and the blocks started breaking. Soon enough, we were free. As we escaped, a Mermex soldier almost caught us, but we managed to get out of there. Thank you for freeing me, Zozo. I'm going to go see my family. They're probably worried about me, but I hope we meet again someday. I hope that too, Paris. Safe travels. Paris left, and I decided to get out of the Sika Woods before more Mermexes were sent after me. On day three, I found my way into the meadow, where I figured that no Mermex soldier could ever find me. Man, escaping that hive was hungry work, though. I wonder if there's some food around here that's perfect for a little fire rabbit like me. Not long after, I found a patch of carrots. Perfect! I dug them up and ate them, feeling my hunger bar replenish. It made me feel a whole lot better. Until another, bigger rabbit hopped over to me, and he didn't seem pleased. Hey, those are my carrots you just ate. They were prized, award-winning, and you just ate them without even asking me. Do you have any idea how messed up that is? Oh no, I'm so sorry. I didn't know they were yours. I never would have eaten them if I did. You think that makes me feel better? I'm still down a bunch of carrots. We rabbits should stick together, not steal from each other. Is there any way I could make it up to you in the name of rabbit solidarity? Hmm, well, there are a few favors you could do for me. Follow me, I'll figure out a way for you to pay off your debts. Thank you so much for your forgiveness. I'm Zozo, by the way. I'm KR, let's go. And I followed KR, eager to get back into his good graces. From day four to day five, KR escorted me back to his base in the meadow. He must have been pretty brave to live out here in the middle of nowhere. This is my place. Don't tell anyone about this place under any circumstances. Why? Because I like my privacy. Don't ask too many questions. It's not a likable quality. Inside the base, he explained to me exactly how I could repay him for eating his special carrots. As you know, the world is hard for little rabbits like us. People think they can pick on us, look down on us, and I've seen too much of that throughout my life. I've kept a list of the kind of people who have made my life harder over the years. Rabbit haters, you know. Let me get through my list, and not only will you be happier, you'll have repaid your debt. That sounds like something I could do. Where should I start, KR? You can start by getting out of here and making your own base. It'd be dangerous for us to be seen together. Take this stone sword and stone pickaxe and make something of yourself before you come back to me. He gave me the tools and I got out of there. The meadow gave me the creeps, so I decided I'd set up my base in the ebony woods instead. I used the pickaxe to mine some stone. I made myself an axe and cut down some trees for wood. I found a nice clearing in the forest and built myself a basic base where I could at least sleep with a roof over my head for the night. But when I was done building, I got my first unwelcome visitor, one of the Mermex soldiers who had captured me earlier. There you are! I knew you were the killer rabbit, and now I'm gonna put you down. Killer rabbit? What? That's not me! I'm not gonna listen to your lies. Time to battle you, bad bunny. He seemed strong, and as I was, I felt like I couldn't beat him. I summoned up my strength and leveled up. I got bigger, stronger. I now had 20 hearts and a new ability, the fireball attack. And with one blast of that fireball, the Mermex soldier was gone. I really am living up to the fire rabbit name. From day six to day eight, I was exploring the ebony woods a little further. It was a strange and magical place, made even more magical by a sudden reappearance, Paris the Pink Pixie. I immediately hopped over to meet her. 
Hey, Paris, is everything okay? I wish I could say it was, Zozo, but no, something terrible happened. I went to see my family, but they were all gone and their home was destroyed. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, Paris, that's terrible. Do you want to stay at my base? I can help you in your time of need. Thank you, Zozo, but right now, I need to be alone. We'll speak again soon. Be safe out there. Paris the Pink Pixie left. I felt terrible for her and started to wonder if maybe the ones who destroyed Paris's family were the same ones that KR warned me about. Maybe it was time to begin my quest. I returned to KR's base in the meadow and asked him what I should do first to complete my mission. Your first target is the hairy troll further into the meadow. He's a violent, dangerous individual, so you should take him out with extreme prejudice. Do you think he could have been behind the destruction of the Pink Pixie family? What? How do you know about that? I know the survivor. Hmm, there's a strong possibility. But don't ask him about it when you meet him. Just destroy him. He'll try to deceive you. From day 9 to day 10, I followed KR's instructions and went further out into the meadow. Wow, this is vast and empty. But I pressed on. I needed to avenge Paris and repay my carrot debt to KR. There was no backing out now. Suddenly, the hairy troll jumped out and ambushed me, ready to attack. I knew he'd send someone after me. Of course he'd be too cowardly to go after me himself. Pathetic. Cowardly? No, what's cowardly is destroying a whole family of pink pixies rather than picking on someone your own size. I'm just doing a favor for a friend. You have terrible taste in friends. I've never hurt any pink pixies. He told me you'd lie. Let's battle. The hairy troll was a tough enemy, but with my sword and fireballs, I was able to defeat him in the end. Shortly after his defeat, a wolf woman came out of the forest. Wow, you really fried that troll. I had no idea anyone could do those awesome fire tricks. Thanks, I don't like hurting people, but I needed to stop him from ever hurting anyone, like he hurt the Pink Pixie family. Oh, the Pink Pixie family. I heard about that. It was terrible. But I don't think a troll was behind that. It was some kind of other creature. So the attacker is still at large? Oh no, I need to speak to KR about this. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to KR's base, telling him that I'd defeated the hairy troll, but that the one who'd attacked the pink pixie family was still out there somewhere. If the hairy troll wasn't behind it, then it must be the thorn wolf. A truly dangerous and evil creature that lives deep in the ebony woods. It wouldn't surprise me at all if the Thorn Wolf was behind the Pink Pixie family attack. Thorn Wolf? Even the name sounds scary. It's definitely a scary creature. I recommend getting better weapons and tools before you go to destroy it. Otherwise, you may find yourself at a disadvantage. Good idea, KR. I'll get right on it. I found my way to a cave in the meadow and explored until I found some iron ore veins inside. I used some of my spare stone to make a furnace, then mined the iron ore and smelted it into ingots. Now time to do some crafting. I created an iron sword and an iron pickaxe, an iron chest plate, and then left the cave where I ran into a creeper spider. Oh no! Rather than engaging, I ran away as quickly as I could. The creeper spider exploded behind me, leaving a huge crater in the ground. From day 13 to day 15, I ventured further into the ebony woods than I ever had before. My little fire rabbit heart filled with fear. If the thorn wolf really was as powerful and as dangerous as KR told me, then I could be in real danger even being around here. As I was exploring, I heard a sound behind me, so I turned and saw the thorn wolf. He was right there, and I was totally surprised. I braced myself for an attack, but he didn't attack. Instead, he spoke with a kindly voice. Is everything okay, young rabbit? You seem nervous. Are, are you the thorn wolf? Oh, yes, it is my duty to patrol the ebony woods and protect the creatures there. So you're not a bad guy? Well, we always try our best, don't we? Stay safe out there, little rabbit. The thorn wolf left, and I was confused. He was nothing like KR told me. Something really wasn't right here, and I needed to speak to KR immediately. From day 16 to day 19, I returned to the meadow to find KR's base, but it was empty, and KR was nowhere to be seen. This is strange. Maybe he's just out there running some errands. I returned to my base, only to find that Paris the Pink Pixie was there waiting for me. 
This couldn't have been a good sign. I knew that much. What's wrong, Paris? Zozo, it's an emergency. I know who destroyed my family. Who? It was a creature they call the Killer Rabbit. It's one of the most dangerous things in the overworld. Killer Rabbit? K... R... Oh no! And just like that, it all came together. K.R. was the killer rabbit, and he was behind everything. That meant I needed to get back to the Thorn Wolf as quickly as possible. He was in terrible danger. And I was right, and I didn't realize it soon enough. When I was there, Thorn Wolf was already gone, and only the killer rabbit remained. I wondered how long it'd take you to figure it out. Oh well, you are at least a good tool for a while, even if you're useless to me now. I don't get it. Why were you using me like that? I needed a fall rabbit, someone to take the heat for me. And who's better at taking heat than a fire rabbit? Besides, you really did eat my carrots, and I couldn't let that fly, could I? You may have used me, killer rabbit, but now I'm gonna take you down. I fired a fireball at him, and it seemingly had no effect. And when he hit me, it was like being hit by a train. Everything went dark, and I was gone. From day 20 to day 22, I woke up, and the killer rabbit was gone. Instead, a mysterious figure was standing next to me, a large hippogriff. Do you work for or with the killer rabbit? Answer quickly. No, I only ever worked with him when he was tricking me. Now I know who he truly is. I'm 100% against him. Good, then we have a common enemy. I am Laharl the hippogriff, and I was a friend of the thorn wolf. We were defenders of the people, guardians of the forest but now he's gone, and only I remain. You're not alone, I want to be better. I'm Zozo, let me become a guardian of the forest too. We're going to defeat the killer rabbit together. Come to my base with me, and we'll start to plan. Agreed, we will defeat that monstrous creature and keep the people of the forest safe forevermore. I went into the forest with Laharl, and we gathered enough stone and wood to construct a new house for him to stay in. Together, we'd be stronger than we'd ever been before. From day 23 to day 26, I was hopping back through the Sika Woods where I first spawned when I saw the pink glow of Paris the Pixie. Predictably, Paris the Pixie was in peril perpetuated by a pestering pursuer. <laughs> Excuse me, so much alliteration. Zozo, is that you? Help! This wind serpent is trying to blow me away! The wind serpent did indeed look fierce, but even a gust of wind will only fan the flames of this fire rabbit. I hopped forward and hit the wind serpent with a fireball. The slithering mob stopped chasing Paris and started to fly towards me. We battled it out in melee, and I was able to bring it down with my sword. Somehow I knew I could count on you, Zozo. I'm just glad you still trust me. I attacked all the wrong people because of KR, and I let that menace run free all the while. That killer rabbit gives our kind a bad name. You weren't the only one fooled by his goody good act. Don't worry, Zozo. I know that you're out here trying to do the right thing. Doing the best that I can, and I'll work with anyone else who is willing to help me take that lying killer down. Count me in. My family got hurt because of his wicked ways. He won't be getting away with that. Thanks, Paris. From day 27 to day 31, I found a flock of sheep wandering through the woods. They looked really tired, like they had been walking for several days. I hopped over to see what was going on and soon found out what had happened. These sheep were friends of the thorn wolf from the ebony woods, and since he was gone, they'd been looking for a new protector to save them from the killer rabbit. You'll be safe at my base, sheep. Not only is it back where you used to live, but I'll be your protector now. When I got back to my base in the ebony woods, I helped the sheep settle in and then went to go see how Laharl was holding up. Welcome back, Zozo. I made the base cooler by adding some red banners. Wow, awesome work, Laharl. All the buildings of the base now had awesome rabbit banners on them, which suited me just fine. Meanwhile, over at the real killer rabbit's base, not the pretend base over in the meadow, he was now in the process of maniacally planning his next wicked plot from his evil lair. Now, there may be a few people around who know that I'm the killer rabbit, but I think we can arrange some accidents for those individuals. What say you, my fine warden dragon friend? If there's anyone who is good at causing accidents, it's me. They might as well call me Daisy. First name, Oopsie. Full name, Oopsie Daisy. You just had an accident of the you're not gonna be around anymore kind. We're really gonna need to work on your threatening lines there, oopsie. It's difficult. My evil boss is a rabbit. I mean, sorry, boss. You better wise up. I'm not just any rabbit. I'm a killer rabbit. 
From day 32 to day 35, I remembered that one of the Mermex soldiers that I had encountered said that they had been looking for suspicious rabbits. So, I made the choice to go and seek out the hive of the Mermex Queen. It might be a rabbit, but I know what suspicious one they might be looking for. If I tell them who the killer rabbit is, maybe all the other rabbits will stop being captured like I was. I made it to the hive and found that it was guarded by Mermex soldiers. I guess I should have expected that. Halt and stay halted. I'm not halting. I'm here to see the queen. Like we'd fall for that one, rabbit. The Mermex soldier tried to fight me, but I dodged his attacks. I didn't want to hurt anybody while I was trying to make an alliance, so I shot a fireball away from them to let them know who I was. Look, I'm not the rabbit you're looking for. I've got fire powers. Fire powers? But that means you're the one who broke out of the cell. That is true, but only because I shouldn't have been there in the first place. I know which rabbit really did the crimes, so he should be the one who does the time. Okay, we still have questions, but that rhyme convinced us to take you to the queen. Yes, don't be mean. Let me see the queen. You can stop rhyming now. The Mermex soldiers let me inside of the hive so that I could have my important meeting with the Mermex queen. Naturally, the room where I was able to speak with the queen was her own throne room. I am the Mermex Queen. What is your request to my majesty, small rabbit? It concerns the fate of all the land, your Mermex Queenliness. I know who the killer rabbit is. You do? Oh, at long last, that monster has been found. How do you know about him? He went by the name K.R., and now he's on a new spree of attacks on innocent creatures all throughout the biomes. He always was like that, even in my mother's time. She was the Mermex Queen before me, and when the creatures of the woods started being attacked, she suspected everyone but the innocent-looking rabbit. It was her mistake, because the killer rabbit claimed her as another one of his victims. I had to take over the throne, just as my mother's killer went into hiding. I've been hunting him down ever since. It's such a sad story. I promise to help you bring the killer rabbit to justice, with all the fire in my heart. There is more, but it's far too painful to talk about. You should go home for now. I will send a soldier to visit once I've emotionally prepared myself. From day 36 to day 39, I got ready to take my armor up a notch in defense by preparing to go back into the cave for some more iron ore. The killer rabbit was a lot older and more experienced than me, so I had to be all the more prepared for our eventual showdown. I soon found a spot in the cave where iron was abundant and mined away, adding the iron ore to my inventory. Next, I got out my crafting table and smelted the iron ore into the iron ingots I would need to craft the rest of my armor. That should do it. Alright, time to become an iron fire rabbit. I made myself an iron axe since I had been gathering so much wood lately, and an iron helmet, iron leggings, and a pair of iron boots to complete my full set of iron armor. You can't see it on my fur, but believe me, it's there. Now equipped with all this brand new iron gear, I ventured deeper in the cave and found that beneath the iron, there were a few diamonds to be mined. I made sure to get them before I left. Later on, I was back above ground when I got an unexpected visitor. He was half rabbit and half wolf. A rabbit wolf. Hi there. Bet you never met nobody like me before. Hey, you're right. Anyway, the Mermex Queen said I could leave the dungeon cell at the half if I went and brought you back to her. Let me guess, her soldiers locked you up because you were a suspicious rabbit? Well, yeah, I mean, look at me. I'm such a suspicious rabbit, it's hard to know if I'm even a rabbit. Anyway, you should go meet the Mermex Queen over in the Ebony Woods. From day 40 to day 43, I went to meet the Mermex Queen over in the Ebony Woods. Your queenliness, I am excited to work together and solve these crimes. I knew the rabbit wolf wouldn't fail to bring you here. If you ever see him again, make sure to thank him for me. I certainly will. So, are you ready to tell me more about the killer rabbit and his previous rampage? Yes, it's time you knew everything about what happened with him. Even though we had met in a secret location and were trying to keep our conversation quiet, Oopsie Daisy the Warden Dragon had super powerful hearing and was able to pick up on our voices from another part of the woods. Oopsie Daisy, time for an accident to happen, on purpose. He barged into the clearing and fired a sonic laser blast at me, which did many hearts of damage. Hey, what's the big idea? Nothing. I just happened to be totally unintentionally getting rid of two people who know who the killer rabbit is by accident. Aha, now I know who you work for. You just said it was the killer rabbit. Ah, uh, darn it. I actually didn't mean to do that. Oh well, I'll just make you disappear. Then nobody will know. He fired another sonic blast my way, which I almost avoided. I countered with a fireball that didn't seem to do much. 
I looked around for the Mermex Queen and saw that she had escaped while I had been talking to the Warden Dragon. Yeah, I should probably do the same thing. I ran off into the woods, trying to go a different direction so that the Warden Dragon wouldn't know who to follow. From day 44 to day 49, I had gotten away from the Warden Dragon and safely arrived back at my base. I never expected the Mermex Queen to be there as well, waiting to continue our conversation from where we left off. I was happy to see that she was okay and could fend for herself, even without her soldiers. I guess the Killer Rabbit knows we both know about him. That's why he sent that Warden Dragon to destroy us. Perhaps he needs to rely on his henchmen now, because he isn't as strong as he used to be. You mean that he used to be stronger? He totally demolished me the last time we fought! Well, he still is the Killer Rabbit, but he used to carry around a secret rare battle axe that made it really easy for him to make anyone he wanted disappear forever. He was a Killer Rabbit with a Killer Battle Axe? That's so scary! How did you stop him? I didn't. A mysterious mob known as a Crimson Phantom made a curse upon the Battle Axe so that the Killer Rabbit could never use it again. I know. Maybe if we find this Battle Axe, we could use it against him. Didn't stop the Killer Rabbit from being evil, but it did weaken him. Then I'm off to the meadow! That's good thinking, Zozo. I heard that the Battle Axe was crafted deep down in the depths of the meadow. You can find some clues about it there. From day 50 to day 53, I delved all the way to the end of the meadow in order to find out more information about who crafted the battle axe that the Killer Rabbit used in his previous reign of terror. After a lot of searching, I came across an abandoned workshop that looked like it was once used for smithing weapons. This must be the place, I reckon. I found a book near the crafting table that was titled Axe Maker's Notes and opened it up to read the words inside. I have made a lot of axes out of a lot of different materials in my day, and boy do I love doing it. It's my favorite thing to do in the whole wide world. In fact, it's the only thing I do. I'm the axe maker after all. But this latest axe, it's not like the other ones. It's got an evil aura around it, like it's too sharp and too scary just to be used on trees. This axe seems like it could kill someone. It's a killer axe. I better get rid of it before someone uses it for evil. Oh, wait, what's that? Someone is coming. The sentence in the book ended there, and the rest of the pages were blank. Oh no, the killer rabbit must have snuck up behind the axe maker and gotten rid of him so he could steal the killer axe. What a fiend! Still, from what I'd read, the battle axe was a powerful weapon. It must be able to hurt the killer rabbit if he was willing to do so much to get it. I looked around for more clues, but couldn't find any, so I gave up and started to head back to my base. From day 54 to day 57, I was making my way through the meadow when I happened to pass by the area where I had found those carrots before. Didn't the killer rabbit say that those carrots were his? If I know rabbits, and I probably do because I am one, then that could mean that the killer rabbit's base might be around here too. I was excited that I had discovered a clue, but that excitement was quickly lost when the warden dragon showed up to blast me with a sonic laser attack. Whoops, pardon me. That time I was trying to get rid of you, and I accidentally didn't do enough damage. You did enough, actually. You don't have to do any more damage. No, I think I do. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna do all the damage to you. As much as I wanted to, I was still not strong enough to take down the Warden Dragon, so I made my escape as quickly as I could. Even though I didn't find it, I was right about the Killer Rabbit's base being nearby. The horrible hair was there right now, scheming up a storm. Soon, yes, very soon, I will find a way to reverse the curse and take back my battle axe. All of them will pay then. From day 58 to day 62, I had made it back to the base and saw that Laharl had created a storage room for all of our weapons. Great work, Laharl. Thanks. I just figured since you were talking about a rare secret killer battle axe, I should make some room for it. One thing led to another, and now there's a whole room full of every other weapon we had. There seems to be a lot of empty spaces. I guess I'll have to make us some more. We could definitely use some diamond ones, since we don't have any yet. Good point. I'll see if there are any more diamonds down in the mine. I went down to the mines, and it was just my luck. There were some more diamonds right in the same cavern where I'd found the previous ones. I dug all around so that I could have enough for a diamond weapon to put in the weapon storage room. Once the diamonds were gathered, I chose to craft two diamond swords, one for myself and one for storage. I also crafted a diamond chest plate and a diamond pickaxe because diamonds make everything better. From day 63 to day 66, Laharl and I were hanging out in the base when our conversation suddenly turned serious. 
When are we gonna do something about that killer rabbit, Sozo? He's starting to become a real problem for everyone. I know, Laharl, but I can't even defeat the clumsy warden dragon he sent to make me disappear, much less the killer rabbit himself. But if you had that secret rare killer battle axe, you might stand a chance. But that's the trouble. I don't have that secret rare killer battle axe. Not yet you don't, but I think I might know where it is. Take me to it then. Don't you know how serious I am about wanting to stop the killer rabbit? Laharl listened to how serious I was and took me to the eroded badlands where we found some cursed ruins. We walked up to them until we hit an invisible barrier. How did these ruins get so cursed? A long time ago, the Crimson Phantom put a curse on these ruins that won't let anyone else enter. The Crimson Phantom? Isn't that the same creature that cursed the battle axe? Yes, but it looks like we need to get him to lift the curse before we can check to see if the battle axe is here. From day 67 to day 70, the Myrmex Queen came into the base and told me that she had also been searching for the Crimson Phantom. He's been sighted in the Ebony Woods, but my guards weren't able to capture him. He's even taken a few down. I didn't realize this Crimson Phantom was such a dangerous creature. He sure is. I could really use your help bringing the Crimson Phantom in. Then let's do it. You can count on me, your queenliness. He left my base and went through the woods to find the Crimson Phantom flying away after having just defeated one of the Mermex soldiers. You'll never take me alive. I'm the dang old Crimson Phantom, you bunch of goofballs. Knock it off, Crimson Phantom. We need your help. Nah, who needs my help? He attacked, so I had to blast him with fire. The Crimson Phantom was definitely strong based on the way he tanked my attack. So I whacked him a few times with my diamond sword. Please, don't fight. We just want to stop the killer rabbit, and we know that you do too. You put a curse on his battle axe so he couldn't hurt people with it. So what if I did? It was probably the nicest thing I ever did for anyone. It doesn't have to be if you help us again. Please, Crimson Phantom. Ah, shucks. How can I say no to an innocent rabbit? And just like that, I convinced the Crimson Phantom to help us retrieve the secret rare killer battle axe so we could defeat the killer rabbit. From day 71 to day 74, that pesky accident-prone warden dragon showed up at my base to try to get rid of me again. Come on out and face me, Zozo. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> it will. I hadn't gotten any stronger since we fought before, but my weapons and armor were a bit more durable, so I hopped out and decided to take him on. Take this, Daisy! Fireball! I circled around the warden dragon, shooting fireballs and trying to avoid his sonic blast. I wasn't fast enough, and my armor couldn't protect me. I took many hearts of damage. I got down to just half a heart. Oh no, is this how I'm gonna go out? Apparently not, because instead of doing you in, I'm accidentally going to steal your best friend the Harl, and completely not on purpose, hold him hostage somewhere. You monster, why? I don't know. I'm not sure why I do anything anymore, but I am evil. The Warden Dragon dragged Laharl away, and there was nothing I could do about it because I was too weak. I can't do this. I'm just a rabbit. I went to the room to mope about it and close myself away from everyone else. I couldn't let them see me after such an embarrassing defeat. That was until the Crimson Phantom arrived. Hey there, Zozo. Don't blame yourself for what happened. You'll get Laharl back. You really think so, Crimson Phantom? Of course I do, and once you do, you won't have to worry, because I've given your base some sweet defenses. You wasn't kidding. The Crimson Phantom had made a wall around the base, which had a curse on it so it wouldn't allow any of my enemies to pass through. From day 75 to day 78, I learned more about the perimeter wall, like how it would only let people that I trusted into the base. The Mermex Queen was definitely someone I knew I could trust. The perimeter wall let her right through. Greetings, your queenliness. Zozo, there is one more thing I didn't tell you about the killer rabbit, but I'm going to tell you what that is now. What is it, Mermex Queen? Your friend, Laharl, he kept this secret from you because he wanted to protect you. The truth is that the curses of the Crimson Phantom can be reversed by the feathers of a live hippogriff. You mean that now the killer rabbit can... Reverse the curse and reclaim his ultimate weapon, yes! You must go and rescue Laharl before the killer rabbit extracts his feathers. I will. I think I know now where in the meadow his base is. The Mermex Queen gave me some javelins to serve as a ranged weapon and wished me luck as I departed. From day 79 to day 84, I searched for the killer rabbit's base in the meadow. I knew that it had to be somewhere around where I had found that fateful carrot patch. Sure enough, Oopsie Daisy the Warden Dragon was wandering around in plain view of that area. He had taken Laharl captive earlier, and now he was going to tell me where he was. Hey you! 
Give me back my friend. Oops, you aren't supposed to find me. Well, now I have, and I'm gonna scorch you. I rained fireballs and javelins down on him from a distance, but it still wasn't enough. And his sonic blast still hurt quite a bit. Uh -oh. What was I worried about? <laughs> it's not like you could defeat me even if I accidentally let you. I was beginning to think I was done for. And then Laharl swooped down from above and attacked the warden dragon while his sonic blasts were focused on me. Oh no, I should have seen that coming, but I accidentally did not. Laharl's attacks did enough damage to bring the warden dragon down and defeat him for good. After the warden dragon was defeated, I approached Laharl. Laharl, you're free. I sure am, Zozo. That warden dragon accidentally let me go before we even got to the lair of the killer rabbit. I've just been down here in the meadow, trying not to get caught again. At any rate, I'm glad you managed to get away. I was worried about you. I found something else while I was down here. A golden apple that is said to imbue the one who eats it with true strength, as long as they are pure of heart. It's yours now, Zozo. Gee, thanks! I'm starving! I ate the golden apple and could feel myself transform. I must have been pure of heart because I grew into a supersized fire rabbit and had a grand total of 60 hearts. My jump was given a big boost too, allowing me to reach higher heights than ever before. From day 85 to day 89, Laharl and I went back to the base where things were once again becoming super ultra serious all of a sudden. Zozo, it is time. I'm gonna take you back to the eroded badlands so we can get that battle axe. But how are we going to bypass the curse? Oh wait, aren't your feathers the way to do it? Yes, my feathers can make a magic key that will let you get through. I held off on telling you until I was sure that you were pure of heart. But now that I know you are and that you won't become another killer rabbit once you get the battle axe, I can give you the key. Laharl gave me a bunch of his hippogriff feathers and I crafted them into a key. Use the key at the ruin. It'll be like I am with you. I did as my good friend Laharl said and traveled back to the cursed ruins in the eroded badlands. With the magic key, I was able to bypass the curse and enter the ruins. Inside, I found the battle axe lying in wait for me to claim it. I'm gonna put the magic key that Laharl made away. It'd be pretty silly if I accidentally reversed the curse and made it so that the killer rabbit could use the killer axe. After I had safely stowed the key, I took the secret rare battle axe from its place and left the ruins. From day 90 to day 94, I stepped out of the ruins and found the killer rabbit standing out there to confront me in the eroded badlands. How do you do, fellow rabbit? It's over, KR. I have the battle axe now, and you'll never break the curse on it. That's the thing about you, Zozo. You always think you understand everything. That's why it's so easy to trick you. Nuh-uh. This time I do understand everything. I understand that you are a ruthless monster who must be stopped before he hurts anyone else. But think of what we could accomplish if you joined me. Nobody would disrespect us bunnies anymore. We would be the top of the woods. I'll never join you, killer rabbit. Suit yourself. By the way, I accidentally picked up some feathers that your hippogriff friend Laharl dropped down in the meadow. That's not good. The killer rabbit leaped forth and wrestled with me for the axe. I was a strong rabbit, but he was still stronger. And before I could stop him, he reversed the curse on the axe and took it back. No, you tricked me. I thought I understood, but I didn't. You're too naive. Now wallow here in this sand pit. He jumped on the sand I was sitting on, and the impact of his landing made the sand collapse, so I fell into a deep hole. From day 95 to day 97, I used my boosted jumps to slowly but surely make my way back up to the surface of the eroded badlands. There was no time to lose. Now that the killer rabbit had the super secret rare killer battle axe, he was going to go on his biggest spree of attacks yet. And I know who he's gonna go after first. I rushed back to the Sika woods and entered the hive of the Mermex Queen. Her soldiers were destroyed, and that wasn't even the worst part. In her throne room, the Mermex Queen was dying after having just been attacked by the killer rabbit and his killer axe. No, your queenliness. Sozo, so you made it. I'm so sorry. I tried to stop him, but he tricked me once again. And now he's wiped out your entire hive. Do not worry. As long as there is a Mermex Queen, the hive will be able to replenish itself. What you must do now is get the battle axe away from him at all costs. I'll do it. Even if I have to risk everything, I will do it. In a few days, my final egg will hatch and become the new queen. You need to protect her for me. I will. I will, your queenliness. She passed on, leaving me behind in the world that I must save.
On day 98, I returned to my base in the Ebony Woods and found that the perimeter wall and the rest of the base was destroyed. Laharl was there, but nobody else had survived the attack. He came for the Crimson Phantom Sozo to make sure that he was never cursed again. Now the battle axe is his forever. Don't say that, Laharl. I know that you and I get serious sometimes, but we always keep on trying to make things better. The only reason he left me alive is in case anyone else cursed the axe so that I could reverse it. So that killer rabbit only spared you for his own reasons. That makes me so mad. He'll probably fool you again if you give in to your emotions. Well, my emotions are pure right now. And every spark of fire in my being demands justice. Then what the heck? Go get that battle axe. You're strong enough now. I can feel it. Laharl cheered me on as I marched off through the woods. On day 99, I arrived in the meadow with a burning passion in my heart. I was ready to take down that killer rabbit with all my strength and all of my fire. Once I was inside his base, I came face to face with my nemesis once more. You never learn, do you, Zozo? Like fire, you think you're bright, but when it rains, you go out. The only rain I see now is your reign of terror, and it ends here. A clever use of two words that sound alike, but you've forgotten already that I have the killer axe. Actually, it is you who has forgotten. That battle axe was accidentally forged to be evil, but it was touched by a hero who was pure of heart. I jumped at him, and once more, we wrestled with the axe. This time, I managed to get it away from him and ran out of his base. The secret to the battle axe that I was finally able to understand was that it was cursed twice. Once I was back home, I used some more of Laharl's feathers I found in his base to undo the first curse that happened when it was made, turning it into a weapon of pure goodness and justice. Now, no evildoer could ever wield it. Only I could wield the battle axe. On day 100, I returned to the meadow with a new and improved super justified hero axe and faced off against the killer rabbit. Why did you come back? I might have let you live for a while. I had to. There is a whole world out there that needs to be protected from rotten rabbits like you. There is a young Mermex queen who will hatch today. There is a hippogriff who is my best friend. For them, for everyone, my fires of good will burn out your evil. The killer rabbit hopped at me, but with the battle axe in my hand, my attacks were strong enough to take his hearts away. Curse you, Zozo! Haven't you got it yet? I can't be cursed. I blasted him with fireball after fireball, and then swung the battle axe down on him, ending the fight. There is a new rabbit in this land, and he's a protector rabbit.